Welcome back, brothers. Oh, shit. I know we were Welcome throwing up fucking school. gang signs like that, dude. Uh, yeah, this is our uh, 50th episode. Yep. Anniversary. Big, big time, big time shit. Uh, so we asked around. We asked the scoopers. They said uh, they wanted a a McKay's vlog. Which That's is what we're doing. Kind of weird because I feel like we got quite a bit of backlash yeah, so from my face reveal. You guys said, uh, I don't want to see Carl's face. I don't, I like no one. <laughs> I like not I, knowing I like what Carl looks like. Picturing the biggest dumb idiot that I yeah, can think and then, of. <laughs> and then I ask what you want for the 50th episode, and you say, do a McKay's vlog. Do you want to see Carl's face, or unless, do you not? Make up your mind. How about that? Unless they don't. They. I mean, we could point the camera away from us. Yeah, we could just show the idiots yeah, in McKay's. That'd be worse than seeing me. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a lot worse than seeing me. <laughs> um, I'm turning in two things. Hell or high water. He's got I know like, what you're thinking. What? Why are you being an idiot? Hell or high water is great. I know it's great. All right. Yeah. I have the 4K steel book because I'm a real man. And it's fucking awesome. Because I'm a real I man. I don't have it. I don't got it. Because he's an idiot. So why would he have it? <laughs> what do you want? And then I'm turning in uh, this Catcher in the Rye. Yeah. Great book, but I found a hardcover last time. So got to make that happen. Um, fucking big dick shit right there. Yeah. So am I excited about doing this? No. Yeah. Not excited at all. It's probably the last thing I'd like to be doing is recording <laughs> is, myself in public. But it's so, you know, it's so weird, dude. <laughs> but the it's scoopers so... ask and the scoopers receive. Yeah. So found my favorite. Uh, sir. Found the goods. This oh, is God. this is what it's all about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll put that shit back. Not getting that. I can tell you that one. Ooh. Oh, fire. I've already got this, but yeah, this shit, dude. the sways. Ooh, the fucking sways, dude. Are you gonna, are you gonna scoop that? I actually haven't seen this. Mm. Probably. This is uh, pretty awesome. I already have it though, because I'm a intellectual. Um, yeah, they got a bunch of those. I'm not that far Culture. See this shit? That's. That's. Do that. <laughs> Hang on now. Oh, this is that horrible movie. Whoa. Alright, how about you? How about settle down? <laughs> Hold on to it. This is Nick we're talking about. It is Nick. Look at this shit. Saw steel book. It's a steel book? Yeah. Oh so they got a slipcover. That used to be like one of your top I might have to. I might have to take this. Ooh. What is going on right now? Dude, we're popping off. It's what pretty, a What a time. Pretty nuts. I'm gonna go and put that person as a ghost thing. 15 bucks seems like a yeah. lot for a bad movie. Nana. Nana. 50 bucks. Ooh, you already got this? I do. Okay. I do because I'm not a complete idiot. Well, <laughs> <laughs> let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> Just nightmare stuff right there. Mmm, 13. It's a little, a little rich. Mm. <laughs> a little rich. It's pricey for my blood. So got the Good Burger Steelbook from two years now. Yeah. Ooh, do they have the Diary of Wimpy Kid stuff? <laughs> Is something funny? No, no, I'm just, I'm just hanging out, dude. Did I say something facetious? Mmm. Where's Roger Rules? Is that just the first one? Where's Rick? Um. Roger Rules? That's dog days right there. 
I need Roger Rules. Yeah, what is this, amateur hour, dude? Yeah, it looks like it. This, they don't even have Roger Rules. Why are we here? I'm just gonna put this back. Yeah. Ooh, got the uh, Criterion uh, Cri collection. Criterion area. Got Carlos. If you got a, we'll get a close up of Carlos. Oh, that's a good price. We've got a after hours, but I already own it because I'm a cool guy. It's pretty sick. Pretty awesome. How much credit do you have? That's what I need to look at. I think I have 20 bucks. Dude, why is this shit so zoomed in? This I've is got ass 18 vlogs. Oh, way to go. That was you. Oh, yeah. You yeah. standing here not touching anything? Yeah. That was me. It saw you in your in your fucking stupid clothes and <laughs> you got scared. <laughs> I know. I'm jealous. I know. And you're not even wearing your, one of your cool shirts. Mm. You got your gladiator They're shirt. They're all dirty. I wear them too much. Really, uh. Every time I see this, I'm, I should probably buy this. Really slacking on the crites. Um. Well, it's Tarkovsky, so it'll probably be horrible. Yeah, that's why I don't buy it. Unless you are having trouble sleeping, then it might be your might be a good call. Um, oh my God, they gotta calm down. Thinking about forever. I know. What better time for making love music than McKay's? Then I'm not smelling McKay's. <laughs> Phantom. Oh, it's a cool cover. It's pretty awesome. I don't think I'm gonna spend ten bucks on that though. That's just me. I don't know. I don't want to spend ten bucks on some mid TA. Lesbian stuff happens in this. So you're buying it, right? It's a DVD. I want. I want high quality. But if it was men, you'd. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. If it, was, if it was uh all right so uh i ran out of uh i ran out of storage on my phone so it stopped recording the vlog didn't go as according to plan yeah, but you know could've. fucking e chang man shit happens we yeah. gotta roll with yeah. it yeah um carl didn't buy anything i didn't i had that red dawn steel book because it's the only thing that, <laughs> the only thing that really stood out to me but i haven't seen the movie and it was 20 bucks so i was like i'll just wait you're Hold exaggerating up. it was 17 dollars it was seventeen eighty four, so round that up. Eighty four. It, it nothing's eighty four there. It was some. Everything's ninety five. It ends in a ninety five. Okay, well it was seventeen ninety five. Thanks. It was Thanks a for nickel, a not nickel, lying. A nickel off from being eighteen bucks. By the time you get it up there, it's twenty. Didn't want to do that, and I looked for From Hell because I was like, I got this big credit, I could get something expensive that I normally wouldn't get, and this is the only time that they haven't had it, so that was pretty mm. cool. Pretty How much cool. credit do you have? 20 bucks 20 bucks well man. sorry let me get specific it's 18 and some change let me not lie to you cash i'd hate to this guy i hate to pull your dick this guy 1896 oh okay it was just funny that you said 84 like you were you were so you were being so specific about it but that doesn't exist I was like making up some shit dude. i, know. I knew it was, you said it like it was, it was a close fact. i knew it was close to that to it was closer to 18. you pulled a logan and round down to 17. People don't do that. Anyways, Carl didn't buy anything because he's an idiot. You perhaps a soft steel look. Perhaps, but I still bought something. All right, the scoopers wanted to see a vlog. I bought something. I got a. Scoop. They wanted to see a vlog, and then you didn't give them a vlog because your phone fucked up. I did give them a vlog. I gave them a solid five to six minutes of a <laughs> vlog, and I bought this little number right here: the Oceans trilogy. 14 bucks not including the woman oceans yeah cause, because because who needs that yeah i don't i'm not watching it yeah um who needs i'm women? watching this for men right? <laughs> i like men yeah this is men right here Hell yeah, guys dude. being dudes i've never seen these movies and i think this may be a mistake because i think there's a 4k like set coming out later this year so i'll probably sell this and buy that but awesome in the meantime got this little number right here um, and, uh, that's what happened. So, 
the other uh we could go to another mckay's and like try to uh lengthen the vlog a little bit but it's closed now because they're moving and they're in the period where the one closed down but the next one hasn't opened yet so this is the only one yep so we can't do that uh we're thinking about getting some food perhaps 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 maybe a potato because there's a baked potato place here I know that sounds crazy. To pretty, me. The average, pretty nuts. The average person that doesn't know what a spud is. But yeah, but I mean, their crazy. spuds are the size of Carl's head. Yeah. I mean, they're absolutely gigantic. So, thinking about doing that. Maybe some Dario. Probably. <laughs> you kidding me? Dude, I'm just, I'm just, you I'm gotta just, fucking I'm just calm down. Around, dude. I'm just, you gotta calm down I'm just with these ideas. ideas. I know. Um, probably go home and watch some Shogun. How is that, by the way? Dude, it's fucking awesome. I watched three episodes in a row last night. Hell yeah. Because you were sweepy and you went to bed. I did. I, I did call it. had to go to bed. I did call it quits. Yeah. But I did. I, a buddy of mine in class said something about uh, Fallout being pretty awesome. So I'm going to have to check that out as well. Yeah, you should, uh, you should watch that. Yeah. I've never played the games, but like. I've never, never played the games. I want to. I want to oh. play more games. I, I know. Right. Play the game. All right. <laughs> I want to play more games, but it's they take so long, and uh, they're hard. I don't know if Fallout's gonna be your cup of Dude, tea because it doesn't have like a. It has an overall story, but it's mainly like open world for you to like go out and discover things on your own. Mm, not a fan of that. Yeah. I like to be spoon fed. <laughs> Yeah. Like I, I want to be walked. I want it to have a little thing in the top corner. Up on your little high chair with a little, the little rubber spoon. I want it to say in the top right corner, my objective, and I want it to have like An a arrow. ping on the map on where it is. An arrow <laughs> to find it. That's yeah. what I want. Those idiots that only like Marvel movies because they over-explain everything and they don't have to do any thinking. That's how I am with games. <laughs> yeah. I don't want. I don't want to have to think. That's why I love The Last of Us so much. Yeah. There's no, like, room for error with that game. Well, there like, is. you can die. Like, you, you, there's missions where you can die, but you're never really confused about what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. So You're a big fan of the uh, stealth missions. I do like the stealth missions. <laughs> I've never seen you successfully complete a stealth mission I don't know what you're talking life. about. I don't, I don't, well, fucking, my phone keeps shutting off because... I'm out of storage. So, <laughs> Whatever the uh, fuck that means. we're just going to have to cut this short and we'll see you for the normal film scoop. Yeah. The regularly, regularly scheduled program. Yep. Yeah, the usual. The yeah. usual. Yeah. The usual. So, uh, thanks for watching this. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Probably didn't. It's probably terrible. You probably didn't enjoy <laughs> it's it. It's probably the worst thing they've ever ask seen. Ask and you shall receive. That's yeah. what we say. Yeah. All right. So, uh, see ya. Okay, one more thing. Uh, I forgot to mention when we walked into McKay's recording, we were both talking about how awful this is and how we hate doing it. And then Carl was like, we should have just done the Carl no oxygen challenge yeah. instead. That would have been better. <laughs> anything, so, yeah. anything would have been better. Carl versus hydraulic press. Yeah. All right. We are tonight's entertainment. What the fuck is this, Chet? <laughs> is a tasty burger. Were you rushing or were you dragging? You like Huey Lewis in the news? Is this your homework, Larry? Why just you be? Welcome back. To the film scoop. To the film scoop. Boy, did we have some technical difficulties <laughs> just now. You've been... I tell you. You have been bent over, spread, and they hit you with the old... <laughs> that was... shoved it in, dude. Insane what yeah. just happened. So, every time we record... <clears throat> um, we do a little mic test. Make sure everything's, you know, Classic make sure the test. cords are lubed up. Make sure mics are plugged in. Everything's properly propagated. And uh, we did the mic test. Everything was riding smooth. And then we play the uh, the intro song that you you guys hear, you scoopers hear. But we have to mute it from our end so you don't pick it, so it doesn't get picked up in our mics. Yeah. And so I muted it so we could record, and. It, the, it kept playing out loud. 
like the song, the intro song kept playing <laughs> yeah. out loud and getting picked up by our mics. And I was yeah. like, Carl, you just saw me mute that, right, Carl? And he was like, yeah, you muted it. I don't know why it's still playing sound. And I was like, okay, maybe we're seeing things. Like, <laughs> obviously, I didn't mute it. Yeah. So I do it. I mute it. We both looked at it muted. And then I was like, all right, let's do this again. And then it played sound again. <laughs> And I was like, what the fuck is going on? I know <laughs> would, I, I know a lot about computers, and I've never seen anything like this before in my would, life. Cash looked at me and went, Carl, I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm going to figure it out, dude. I, I haven't been that mad in a long time. <laughs> so, fucking... Yeah, and then before um, that, the mics weren't working. We had to figure out what was going on with that. And yeah, the mics just weren't picking mine up Mine was also noise. just cranked up to the maximum, and I was killing people's dude, eardrums some i pissed off some ai in my computer or something <laughs> yeah, they're trying dude. to dick us yeah um and then it turns out my computer was connected to my bluetooth speaker so that's why like us muting it was not really working right yeah. but when the sound was playing it didn't sound like it was coming from the speaker it sounded like it was coming from the computer yeah so i didn't know like i don't I, know how it, it sounded just difference. like it was coming from the computer yeah so Fucking anyways, now that all that shit's done, uh, we're here, we're back, 50th episode. Big five oh. Big, uh, the big number. Yep. Well, halfway to the big number, but still worth, you know, a mention. Yeah. Still worth, you know, a little shout. Um, we, uh, we asked the scoopers what they wanted to see for our 50th episode, and they told us a vlog, like a Blu-ray hunting <coughs> vlog at McKay's, which is a yep. local used used movie store. Yeah, which you guys, you guys are kind of nuts. Because first there was, we don't want to see Carl's dumb face, so we want to just picture the dumbest person possible in our heads and just attach him to Carl's voice. Well, we already brought that up in the video, so you don't have oh, to bring we did? it up again. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, so yeah, we, we recorded that, but it's pretty shitty. And it didn't last very long. My and phone my phone got full of storage, so it stopped recording. It was almost immediately when we walked also in. Also, <laughs> just like, I hate recording myself. Like, I, I've never done that before in my life. And I never want to do it again. Yeah. I've never been more out of my element than... <laughs> I never thought I'd be out of my element in a McKay's. <clears throat> but the second I have to record myself in McKay's... I'm instantly out of my element. Yeah. I'm it's so funny because I'm a fish out of water. You did the, the little intro and then you're like, all right. And then you, <laughs> <laughs> like just having to stop recording, like like turn that off yeah, and it's stop so recording. It's so awkward when funny. you're when you're in real time and you're watching someone record a YouTube video and they press record and then they start talking and then they have to reach and end the recording and then it's it's silent. Like the in a YouTube video it cuts to the next clip. Yeah. But when you're there in person, and you just have to end stop. it and go, all right. <laughs> like, it's so fucking weird. I can't believe people do that for their jobs. Yeah, dude. Like, there's YouTubers. Like, I was I was talking about how uh, I watch, me and Carl both watch Penguins. Moist Critical. Yeah. You know, funny guy. Uh, he makes videos, like, going to fast food places and trying their menu. And I just watched one where he went to Taco Bell and ate, like, their new cantina menu. And... From my end, it looks completely normal. This yeah, guy sitting fine. in his car eating Taco Bell. Yeah. I don't think twice. But if you're in the car with him and you watch him set up his phone, like get the lighting <laughs> right, yeah. press record, and then eat some Taco Bell, talk to no one, talk yeah. to himself in his car, and then hit end record, like it's super weird. Yeah. And, and then uh, he's in there like chewing silently. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy yeah. dude I can't believe people I never yeah. want to do that again if you're act like you're watching that video you're like this is cool if you're actually there you'd probably call 911 yeah you know, this guy's something's wrong with this so guy so I hope you guys enjoy the two and a half minutes of vlog that we did at McKay's <laughs> yeah. cause it's never happening again we gave it the old college <laughs> yeah. try <laughs> um yeah so uh that's what we did and now we don't really have like a a huge main topic to discuss. Obviously, we'll talk about Civil War, which is the big discussion movie for the week. But not not really any, like... I mean, I think Carl has, like, a list or two he's going to go over. But, you yeah. know, just going to be a pretty chill episode. I wanted yeah. to have more to do since it was the 50th episode. Have, like, some, you know, spectacular 
show planned. Yeah. But we were going to go with the the idea of how many nine millimeter bullets I could take to the head before I died. But we decided we could finally do the Carl no oxygen challenge. (laughs) Yeah. Carl versus hydraulic press. <laughs> Carl versus a 2010 Toyota Prius. <laughs> uh, no, I, I have an inside scoop um, and a uh, little, little list that I put together that I thought would be fun. Do you have any inside scoops? Anything crazy happened to you? Um, inside scoops? I don't think so. The guy, I told the story about the Inception shirt I wore at work. Yeah, the guy making the biception comment. Yeah, that guy today uh, made me a, a little uncomfortable again. This one was <laughs> this guy's on fire. Dude. This one was like a less like sexual, I would say. Oh. Even though I, I wouldn't say the first one was sexual, but it kind of felt kind of felt that way. Yeah, in the moment. Um, but I was like at work today, moving shit, you know, moving heavy shit, and then he comes up to me. The same guy, he comes up to me, and he's like. You're gonna get written up for being too jacked, dude. What, the fuck, what do dude? you say to that? I don't know. Like, <laughs> Look, dude, I don't like when people say stuff like that. This to guy me. I don't wants know to, what to do. This guy wants you so fucking <laughs> bad, dude. Like he's being nice, but like I've never complimented. A, like I'll tell a I'll tell my buddy, like, dude, you look fucking huge right now, dude. You look fucking good. I've never complimented a guy. <laughs> like that many times before the the biception thing is already like he's fishing to see where which way you're leaning <laughs> and now he's just like dude you're fucking hot <laughs> <laughs> i think about you in the tub <laughs> that's what he's saying <laughs> no he's a nice guy i i just like i don't know what to do when people say stuff like that yeah i gotta tell you i wish i had that problem because my inside scoop is that I've been called fat all week. <laughs> People have been talking so much shit, dude. So I'm I'm working on uh, a high rise. It's an 11 story tower, and you walk in on the first floor, and I have to go up to the sixth floor to clock in and fill out paperwork, like safety paperwork. Classic, you know, standard <laughs> so, procedure. Every morning I walk up there, I get to the top of the sixth flight. And I am breathing. Winded. I am. I'm gone. (laughs) I should probably take a break on like the third floor, but I usually just push through it. And I get up there, and I am breathing like a fucking pug, dude. I'm. I'm in bad shape. (laughs) So (laughs) the other day, my foreman like walked past me as like as I was getting to the sixth floor, and just dead no reaction in his like like no soul in his eyes. He goes. The stairs are good for you, fat boy. And then just kept walking. <laughs> and I went, God damn, dude. <laughs> what the fuck? That's just insane. Just crushed also, me. Also, you told me that that guy that said it was also fat. He is fat. He is a fat guy. So, what's just, going on here? Dude, he's trying to crush my soul. And then, like... Uh, he the, doesn't want you to pass him. Yeah. He doesn't the, want you to take his job. So exactly. He's trying to demoralize He's trying to keep me down. And then, that same day... The inspector came and he had me fix some stuff and I called him and I was like, hey, did the inspector say anything else? Like, was there something else I needed to fix? He was like, no, other than that you're fucking gay. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then he hung up on me, dude. Okay, so this guy's awesome. Yeah, what you're dude, telling me. Such, such an, and then today, this is the, the cherry on top of my week. I am fucking dog tired and I'm like, dude, I need something to stay awake. I got an hour and a half drive home. So I go to Duncan. <laughs> pull up to the window now. Normal, this is this isn't the best probably light I could paint myself in. But normally, in the mornings, I drink like a black coffee that I make at home. I just add a little bit of sugar. That's it. But I went out and I was like, I need a big ass coffee. You know what? I'm gonna get a sweet coffee. So I I got a large caramel iced coffee. And the lady at the window went, "Did you say large?" And I went, "Uh." Oh. <laughs> Yeah, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> and then she was like, all right, do you want cream and sugar? And I was like, yeah, that's fine. And she was, both? And I went, God what damn, the dude, the fuck what's going on? Dude, I felt like the biggest in, fat ass the, ever. You're in the Truman Show, but yeah, for dude. being fat. Yeah, dude. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. I get my coffee and I'm like, dude, what? Do I look disgusting, dude? What the hell? That's weird because, like, I feel like you never get fat comments. Dude, like, it was ever. like, 
And then you got three in a row this week. Yeah, she had the same voice as the guy that went, July? July? <laughs> That's how she responded to me. <laughs> and I was like, I can't just have a treat after work, dude. I've been. She went, <laughs> a what? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, dude, I've never wanted to just drive away crying more in my you life. Said, never mind, just nice water. So <laughs> that'll be it. Yeah, actually, I'm just gonna do two ten push ups real quick, <laughs> and then I'll be out of your hair. Actually, I'm gonna go get a nine millimeter and yeah. fucking shoot my head. Dude, crazy shit. Yeah, that's so. That's yeah, insane. I guess I'm just the most disgusting person on the face of this earth. I don't know why. <coughs> I don't know why that happened. Because you're not you're not a fat guy. Dude, I'm a good looking I tell you what, shape guy. I need I need to make a change. You do wear shin shorts, but that's that's just fashion related. Yeah. Fashion wise, yeah, make fun of me. You know, call <laughs> me names. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. I look like a fucking moron. Yeah. But I mean You're not a fat fella. That's just not ever. Here's the deal. The I know like most people look at me and they think, God, this is this is a real man. You know, <laughs> this but the truth is, this is the peak male. Yeah, form. the truth is, I'm not made of steel. You know, I have people I have, look at Carl and he. And I have go, a heart under here. He's a freak of human movement. <laughs> a freak of human movement. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I got a, I got a real human heart ticking under here. Yeah, and you know, it can get hurt sometimes. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> yeah, I don't dude. know where those came so, yeah, from. Yeah, I've, I've, I've just been getting shit on all week. Got called fat. Got called gay. Like, just everything. Well, you get called gay every week by me. Yeah, so that's true. That's nothing new. That's yeah. just, that's just a Tuesday. Yeah. But the fat stuff, never, buddies never tell me, dove into that can before. My buddies all say I'm bad at sex. You know, it's, it's, the, whole, <laughs> it's the whole nine yards. The whole nine yards. I've just been... I've been Andy Dufresne this week, just crawling through a tunnel of shit. Got in an argument with your wife because you didn't want the dog to watch you yeah, to get it on. I want the dog to lick my ass while I'm trying to be intimate. Um, that was crazy. Yeah, I think that's. I don't. I think that's all the scoop of life. I don't think I have anything interesting. Yeah, that was that was mine. Just um, bad week, dude. Yeah, but we've got a, a little bit of news to go over. I didn't even tell you about this, but you're going to be pretty excited. Oh, man. There is a R-rated TMNT, The Last Ronin film. Live action film. In the works. Oh, my God, dude. That is going to be fucking awesome. Yep. Jeez Louise. (laughs) I am a little (laughs) nervous about the live action thing. And how they're going to do it. How they're going to make the turtles look. Turtle, I guess. But. Spoilers, dude. It, yeah, it doesn't say it in the title. <laughs> don't worry about um, the title. Because, like, I don't like the way they look in the Michael Bay ones. Yeah. But I I think the 90s ones are too dated. Like, you, you can't make a, a serious, gritty movie with those. Like, yeah. those 90s, you know. So... I think that makes it a little tricky. If it, I w- I'd be down if it was just like animated, if they just did an R-rated animated, yeah, know, something in like the Spider Verse style or something. Yeah, I'd be fine with that. Um, <clears throat> so live action does, just in terms of how they're going to make the turtle look, because the last Ronin is a very dark and serious story. Yeah, and it's about a giant turtle. So, that's a. That's a line that you gotta tread there. Tread lightly. Yeah, between (coughs) making it serious and it's also a mutant giant turtle. So that's hard. Yeah. Like I'm not. That's that's a tough task. So hopefully they get the right man for the job and they do it because I haven't read the graphic novel yet, but I know the gist of it and I've seen the short and I love that storyline. Like even without reading it, I just that's. Right up my alley. Yeah, I haven't read it yet either. I haven't, and it's on the shelf awaiting my arrival. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. I'm just saving it. It's just I know how much I'm going to like it, so I'm just, for a rainy day, power goes out, need something to read. For a fucking week like I've been having, I I need that. Yeah, you need that now. Dude, I saw a comedian talking about the Ninja Turtles, and he was like, I've never understood why they wore masks. Like, someone's going to, like, see them fight crime and go, I wonder who that was. (laughs) Like, who the fuck was that guy? Yeah. It's probably one of the four mutant ninjas of yeah. Ninja Turtles over there. In reality, it's only so we can tell a difference between which one it is. Yeah. So we know that one's Mikey and that one's yeah. Leo. 
you know, but there is no real reason. Yeah. Because it, they, we know what they are. Yeah. The second you see the huge turtle man, you're like, okay, <laughs> yeah. that's the huge turtle man. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're wearing a little stripe over your eyes. Yeah, dude. Um, we yeah, got you pinned down. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. Uh, we watched the Joker 2 trailer. That looked fucking sick. <laughs> I uh, I like Joker. When it first came out, I thought it was the best thing in the world. I It really took me by storm. I thought it was awesome. And then more time went on, and I've thought less and less about it. And I I think it's really similar to Taxi Driver and King of Comedy. And I think what Joker really is is like um, how it, po- comic book movies and superhero movies got really popular, and everybody that was the biggest thing at the box office now is just comic book movies, superheroes, supervillains, and Todd Phillips wanted to expose general audiences to like actual movies yeah. like Dr- Taxi Driver and King of Comedy so he basically reskinned those movies with a and just inserted a comic book character into it to I don't want to say trick but like kind of trick people into watching it um <clears throat> so in that way I kind of like it cuz it's a way for uh average joes to like uh, watch real movies. Yeah. So that's cool. But, and like the whole, I know you're not online, but the whole Joker 2 trailer really like sparked a lot of discussions like that because Joker is a franchise that average Joes watch, like I just said. Like yeah. people yeah. not like us, just regular, regular old people on the street. And the Joker 2 trailer came out. So people on YouTube and Twitter and everything that aren't like movie people, show people, they're in some other dimension of the app. They were reacting to the Joker 2 trailer just because it's such a huge trailer. Yeah. They just wanted to give their opinion on it. And the reaction to the shot at the end of her drawing the lipstick smile on the glass and then him like filling the frame and smiling yeah. and it like lining up. These people like that don't watch movies. They were convinced that that was the best shot ever made. And they were convinced, like, they were like, how does someone even, like, who even thinks of that? Like, is that a, the director's idea? Dude, isn't that, like, the exact promo shot for Joker from The Dark Knight was him drawing those faces? Yeah, someone also pointed that out. They were like, it literally happened 16 years ago yeah. on the on the promo post for was, The Dark Knight. It's funny that you bring that up because, first off, I wasn't a huge fan of the Joker movie, even without it being kind of like a shot for shot remake of taxi driver i just like when it got announced i was like i don't know how i feel about that same same reason why like i'm cautious of all the anti-hero movies that have been getting released like the craven movie i'm like i don't know if craven's someone i want an entire movie about Mm -hmm. but um i mean joker's still a good movie but it is it is taxi driver and then him doing a musical, I think, was really bold. I think it's really cool. I really like Lady Gaga for Harley Quinn. Mm-hmm. I think she's a really talented, uh, really talented lady. And I think I do think the trailer looks really good. But I hate the uh, Joker stuff that like spawns from the Joker. The Joker stuff. Yeah, like all the fucking what? like people post like Joker stuff. Like, for a while, the we live in a society became, like, a big thing. Mm. And, like, I don't know. Like, people, like, idolizing the Joker, which is just fucking insane. Yeah. It's, like, that, it like, gets people off as seeing the Joker. I'm like, dude, fucking grow up. Yeah. I mean, I don't really give a fuck about any of that. I mean, people, weird people are going to be weird people. <laughs> so, I, I mean, I don't really give that any mind. But... I think I'm going to like it more than the original. Because what I like about the original is the perform all the technical aspects. The performances, the score, the color grading, the cinematography. All that stuff just is great. Yeah. It's a really yeah. well-made movie. But where I, where I don't like the movie is the story and how familiar it feels and how it just feels like a reskin of King Comedy Taxi Driver, like I said. So... A sequel is basically getting all the great stuff from the first one, like I just mentioned, the performances, the score, the color grading, the cinematography, but now 
an actual interesting and original story, it appears. Yeah. So that's like kind of the perfect solution to like Joker to me. Yeah. So I think I'm going to really like it. I think I so thought too. the trailer was awesome. It sparks your curiosity. It's got a bunch of great shots in it, but it doesn't tell you too much about what goes on in the movie. I do hope I've said that I think all the I think it's pretty obvious. It's not like some fucking tinfoil hat theory, but um, I think all the musical sequences are in his head, and I'm just hoping that the whole movie isn't in his head. I hope yeah. that he eventually breaks out or does something, and there's like real world consequences for what's happening in the story. Yeah, because if it's just him and Arkham daydreaming for <clears throat> two hours, I'm gonna have a hard time liking that. Yeah, so. I think it. I think the trailer is fucking awesome. Yeah, and I really like. It the may be uh, Joaquin's first like good movie in the last two years. Isn't his? Isn't his first like sequel? Yeah, yeah, it's his first sequel. Heck yeah! Um, Needs to cleanse himself of that whole Napoleon situation. Unless I'm forgetting one, I think he hasn't made a good movie since Come On, Come On, which was like three years ago. Yeah. So hopefully no, this will right. get him back on track. Yeah. Um, Skip the old. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. Fuck all that. <laughs> um, Glenn Powell to star in Edgar Wright's The Running Man remake. Ooh. So I don't know anything about The Running Man. I don't know than either. It's an Arnold movie. Yeah. And it's based on the I think a Stephen King novel. That's all. That's all I know. I know um, it looks and I know goofy it's, as hell. It's, I know it's supposed like it's bad. Like that '90s one. People think it's bad. Yeah. So. I'm excited, A, I like Glenn Powell. I think mm-hmm. he's great. And But I'm also excited because I've been waiting for Edgar Wright news. Like, he hasn't been... Nothing's been announced for what he's doing, what he was going to do after Last Night in Soho. Yeah. That came out, like, 2021, I think. Yeah. So, been years, and no rumors about anything he was doing. So, and I'm a big Ed- Edgar Wright guy, so I've been eagerly awaiting such Heck a yeah. such an announcement such a visit um is a running man remake my top option for an edgar Wright movie <laughs> probably not yeah. but i also i i've always said like the movies that should be remade are the ones that are shitty yeah that had a good concept and just weren't done well at the time yeah this is a perfect thing to do a remake of you yeah. know what isn't high and low <laughs> Probably don't remake that. Probably yeah. don't remake an Akira Kurosawa movie. Yeah. That's beside the point. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I don't know anything about the story, like, at all. But him making a movie, I'm happy. And yeah. casting Glenn Powell, I'm happy. So, what's funny is Edgar Wright and Glenn Powell were my two, like, dream castings to star in and direct Booster Gold. Yeah. So, now they're working together. But not for Booster Gold. Classic. But I was on to something. Either yeah, way. Like I knew that dude. those two were destined yeah. to work together. Um You know something crazy too is uh I was looking at some pictures of old Glenn the other day. And he's quite the man. He's quite the hunk. Man's not even the right word. I mean, <laughs> what do you, what word can you even use to describe a creature like that? I was like, uh, what was I? I was trying to show Logan like one of the trucks from Twisters, because it's like July. Uh, yeah, I was trying to show her something from Twisters, and like it just kept on showing it, like that shot of him in the rain with a cowboy hat, and I was like, "Uh, hang on, babe, dude." And then and that's cut in between the, it going like T W I, yes. and it's got like a loud like clank every time a, a letter comes up, and it yeah, cuts to that, dude. and I'm like, "Ugh." Dude, I saw. I, Are you kidding me? I was like, let me see if I can find this thing. And I got to that picture. And I was like, hey, I'm gonna run to the. I, 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 I'm gonna run to the bathroom real quick. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta poo. If you know what I mean, poo out oh, of my penis. What's crazy is I knew Twisters was coming out, and I knew you know sequel to Twister, the cast and everything. Do you know who's directing that? No. It's the director of Minari. Whoa. Yeah, I saw a tweet that said. Lee Isaac Chung said that they got real footage of tornadoes to put in twisters. And oh, I was like, shit. 
why is he talking about twisters? Like, what <laughs> is <laughs> what's like, he did he, like what's what's going on here? What does he have to do with twisters? And then I looked it up, and he's directing it. Oh my god! And that's not the career trajectory I had in mind. <laughs> yeah, to go from Lee Minari. Chung after Minari, Minari to twisters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. Hey, he likes hey, he likes twisters. Dude, he likes his, weather. His can, life is a roller coaster right now. <laughs> I will say though, Logan said she'd watch it with us if they used real tornado footage. Well, so it looks like she's watching it. Or um, she'll say she will and then not. And she'll get tickets to it and then just not go. <laughs> yeah. The classic. Which we'll talk about <laughs> later. Um Project Hail Mary, I've been talking about this, like how it's big deal. Lord Miller Ryan Gosling, uh, Drew Goddard, but that was all just like rumors, kind of, and nothing was like confirmed. Now it's pretty much confirmed that it's coming out in 2026. So, dude, fuck yeah, that's what it's all that about. That if they do it right, that movie's going to be uh, phenomenal. I I recommend the book to everybody. I've talked about it before. It's my second favorite book ever. Uh, my buddy Evan started listening to the audiobook today because I put him on. Hell yeah. And also, side note, um, on Audible right now, I think you have to have an Audible membership. Maybe not. Maybe it's free for everybody. But I was on Audible today and I saw the 1984 Andrew Garfield, Tom Hardy oh my thing that God, they just dude. released. That's out. And it said the whole audiobook's like three and a half hours, which is insanely short yeah. for an audiobook. And it was free, so I didn't even have to pay for it or use a credit on it. So I downloaded it, and it's the best audiobook I've ever heard in my life. Oh my god, dude. It's ridiculous. Because if you've ever listened to an audiobook before, normally it's just a narrator reading the book. And that's yeah. it. Yeah. This has, like, it's mixed in Dolby Atmos. So there's, like, surround sound. So Holy if shit. if... The character, I think his name's Winston. Yeah. If he's like at a rally, you know, like everyone's you know, <clears throat> looking up at the screen watching Big Brother give a speech or something. Yeah. You're hearing like all the people around him like Dude. shattering. And then you hear Big Brother, you hear Tom Hardy as Big Brother with like the effect, the like creepy deep voice effect on him. And you hear it through like a projector um, or like a, like a speaker you know yeah. like the audience would be hearing it at the rally like it is absolutely ridiculous the production value that they they're putting into it and like it's like listening to a movie basically yeah and i've never read 1984 before so this is my first time but i i mean i know like what it's about but yeah. i've never read it so i'm excited to finish it but i recommend that to everybody dude like, 1984 I, is so fucking good dude like in the Dune audiobook, there's times, there's like specific chapters where it'll play a little score in the background, like a little sandy hiss and stuff, yeah. and they'll have actors come in and play each each role, but the, there's like a couple chapters where that happens. Like, it's very inconsistent, and it's rarely ever the case, but for this, it's like, I, I just go listen to it. Like, I... <laughs> It's ridiculous. If you listen to it with headphones or in the car, and it's like you're there, like, listening to it. It's Dude, that's crazy. that's so badass. It's crazy. You, since you're a fan of the book, you should uh, check it out. I'll definitely check it out, dude. I love uh, 1984 and Animal House. Yeah. Or Animal Farm. Sorry, not Animal House. Yeah, I haven't Animal read Animal Farm either, but... It's really good. Or Will's the guy. He's the fucking... He's that dude. But anyways, yeah. Uh, Evan started reading um, Project Hail Mary. He got the audiobook because I told him... I've heard that the audiobook's, like, insanely good. Yeah. Because I know the book's good, but I read the... Just, like, the paperback copy. Yeah. But apparently some of the things I can't get into because they're spoilers, but, like, there's certain things about the book that make it for a great audiobook. Uh-huh. That lend itself to being a good audiobook. And uh, he he read like the first couple chapters, and he was like, "Dude, this is fucking insane! Like, this is <laughs> that's what happened." He to you, said, dude. "If you're a fan of science, like read this." He started recommending it to other people after like a few chapters. Holy he shit! He was like, "This is insane." That but that that thing's giving you guys the bug, man. Dude, you what? Well, do you read four pages and you're like, Carl? <laughs> Corey, sit like, down real quick. <laughs> we need to talk. <laughs> it's uh, it's crack. 
the book is fucking crack. Especially if you're into science and, and science fiction. Yeah. Like, I can't recommend that book. So enough. that one I'll probably have to probably do the audio book instead of the actual book. I mean, either if way. If I have access to it. Either way, I've heard that the audio book makes it better. Okay. Because of certain things. Um, but anyways, Project Hail Mary is like confirmed to be getting made now. I think it's supposed to start filming later this year. Um, so I guess he's Ryan is filming that first, and then he's doing that Oceans prequel with Margot Robbie. I don't know. I mean, I guess that's the order, because they said he was filming later this year. Anyways, he's a busy guy. Yeah, um, he's always on the run, dude. And while we're talking about him, he hosted SNL last Saturday night, which I'm not an SNL guy. And I'm going to be honest. But you are most a Ryan of the time. Guy. It's not funny to me, and I just don't watch it. Yeah, I don't really like skit comedy that much. It's not really my thing. I got gotcha. you. Um, but when Ryan's on, when it's Ryan or Timmy, or like Jake Gyllenhaal, I'll watch them. Yeah. If if certain people are on, so of course I watched the one with Ryan Gosling, and they and they made a sequel to Papyrus. My favorite SNL skit ever. Yeah, they made a sequel to crazy, it. and it's arguably even better. <laughs> it's double the length. It's yeah. twice as long, and there's like actual like arcs and everything. Yeah, like it's, it's, it's like crazy. a high production skit. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's it's crazy. Um, but that that was really good. And then you didn't watch the Beavis and Butthead skit, did you? I did. You did, I did. Dude. People are, Holy are shit. like touting that skit as like one of the best in SNL history. Dude, it was so funny. And I thought it was really funny, but like I'm not in the SNL world, so that could have been a low tier skit and I wouldn't I wouldn't know. Yeah. I just like it because like I'm I'm a Ryan Gosling fan. Yeah. But that was like just really, really fucking funny. Yeah. Like them not knowing what they were talking about. Yeah. But Wearing the exact outfit and the exact expressions, <laughs> yeah, no. and I've never met. <laughs> I've never met this man before in my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one was really funny. And then, uh, the lady breaking character when dude, she looked back at him. <laughs> yes, I don't think it's it's like one of the best skits ever, but it was really funny. <laughs> Ryan Gosling has Ryan Gosling, Tim Chalamet, and Adam Driver have like some of the funniest like stuff on SNL that I've seen recently. Mm. Yeah. Adam Drivers was really good. Yeah. His career day skit was fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Timmy. Look Adam. at me, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Look at your father, boy. <laughs> Dude, that was so funny. Um, I was born three weeks early and they put me in a cast iron pot. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, Ryan, and Timmy are, are the guys when it comes to SNL to me. Yeah. Like those if they're on I'm I'm watching it. Yeah. Um but that's all the news I had for this week unless you had anything. No, I didn't. Um so we'll go ahead and get into our trivia. I feel like my trivia is easy, all three of them. Okay. But we'll see. Yeah, I mean, you are you have been known <laughs> Let to me be, tell you, be I'm stupid. F- I'm full of surprises, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm full of surprises. What are the two longest comic book movies? Um, what are you, what are you including? Theatrical release. Oh, okay. The two longest. Is one of them the Batman? Yep. The Batman. And I want to say either Watchmen or Dawn of Justice, I think. Oh, wait, no. The Flash was really long, wasn't it? Can't say. You're not counting the Zack Snyder Justice League. It's not theatrical. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with The Flash. No. No? It was one of the other two? No. Uh, BVS is two hours. Oh, okay. It's only the Ultimate Edition that's three hours. Uh, it must just feel super fucking long. Watch your mouth. <laughs> 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 Um, How about knock it off? <laughs> what, what's the other one then? I feel like you should guess it. Is it Watchmen? No. All right, let's go with uh, a little bit of fucking. Oh, uh, Endgame. Yeah, yeah. 
There you go. That was an easy one. What the fuck was I doing? I don't know. <laughs> There's only two comic book movies over three hours. Yeah. So that should have been a yeah a gimme. Who did the voice work in motion capture for Bad Ape and War for the Planet of the Apes? Oh, I know that guy. Um, what's his last name? Han. Uh, it's the guy from Daddy Daycare. What the fuck was his name? No, his last name was like Zahn. Fuck, I can't think of his name. Whole name. Uh. <laughs> Gregory Zahn. <laughs> <laughs> no, what's his, what's his what's name? What's funny is his name isn't Gregory, but he is father to Gregory Hefley in Diary of a Wimpy Kid movie. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> his name's Steve Zahn. Steve Zahn. Yeah. Fuck. That's close. It's crazy that you got Zahn, but not Steve. Well, I knew I knew his last name was like something uh, like kind of weird. Yeah. yeah. I love Steve Zahn. Dude, he's Anytime so Anytime he shows up in something, he makes it better. Yeah. He's on that like David Doss Malchin. Um, oh, what's the other guy's name? From He was in the new Mission Impossible. He shows up in like random movies. Oh, the older guy? Yeah. I don't remember his name either. Oh fuck! Come on, <laughs> I know his name. Well, dude, I I watched an entire. Uh, Steve Zahn has like some low budget comedies, and one of them is Strange Wilderness, and I watched that when I was younger, and he was hysterical in Strange Wilderness. I remember you showing me a clip of that. Yeah. It's it a horrible, funny. horrible movie, but he's funny in it. Shea Wiggum. Shea, <laughs> Shea Wiggum. Yeah, that's his name. Hell yeah. Uh, Dude's got a crazy man. voice. Dude, his filmography, like if you just look at the movies he's been in, he's the best actor of all time. <laughs> I mean, his <laughs> filmography is crazy. His bag is deep. Um, but yeah, he's a side character in all of them. Anyways, yeah, he's uh, Steve Zahn's in that like Shea Wiggum, David yeah. Dasmalchin category. Yeah, of just like you see him in a movie, you're like, yep, <clears throat> that's about right. He's meant to be here. That's about the size. That of was it. no mistake. <laughs> uh, last one. Pick the film James Cameron doesn't have a writing credit for. Elite Battle Angel, Terminator Salvation, or Rambo 2? I'm going to go with Salvation. Yep. Oh, really? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. I, I, I this, feel like This question like, kind of like reveals who, what the answer is. Just by the options. Yeah. Because the obvious answer is Rambo 2. Yeah. Because everyone knows he was a part of Elite Battle Angel. He was supposed to direct it. Yeah. But he couldn't get it off the ground. And it couldn't get off the ground until he was already in the Avatar movies. So he gave it to Robert Rodriguez. Um, and then he created the first two Terminators. So it just makes sense for him to write for Salvation. That didn't happen. Uh but he did write Rambo 2, awesome. which is just crazy. Badass, I basically dude. just wanted to find a question where I could bring up how he wrote how he wrote Rambo 2. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's crazy. He was a writer for it. He didn't write it like totally yeah, by he, himself. He but helped out. That's just so funny to me. Yeah. He and just Piranha popped 2 in also. And what? Piranha 2. Oh wrote that. He just popped in like, hey guys. <laughs> yeah. You need a hand? <laughs> yeah. So that's just so funny that <laughs> That, oh, also, this isn't like I was trying to find some uh, Mad Max questions for you. Oh, got gotcha. you. You're a big Fury Road guy, <laughs> mm -hmm. and I didn't find any questions to ask you, but I found out that they shot Fury Road in sequence. Oh my god! Do you know how insanely difficult it is to make an indie movie in sequence? That's fucking. That's crazy, dude. Like, you're making an indie movie, right? Like, um, count fucking, of three, huh? Like count of three. Yeah. On the count of three, you have two scenes and in, in the same place at the beginning of the movie and at the end of the movie. Yeah. If you shoot it in sequence, you don't shoot the, both of the scenes right there. When you have the location, you shoot it, you go off and film the rest of the movie and then you come back to the same location yeah. and shoot a different scene. Like that makes that makes your job so much harder. Yeah. In the in the movie making world, 
if you get a location, you film all those scenes at that one location all in a row. Yeah. Like you, you don't have that va- that location for long. So you have to get them all done. Yeah. And so they're just never. Movies are never shot in sequence because yeah. it's too hard to get locations. You you film whatever you can whenever you can. Yeah. So the fact that Mad Max Fury Road, which is a movie that is notoriously one of the hardest productions of all time, yeah, was shot in sequence. Insane. That makes no sense. <laughs> yeah. I guess I guess the reason they could do it was because there was there weren't many locations and it was yeah. just out in the desert. So you can kind of just pick and choose. I would still think it's a pain in the ass, like with certain scenes having like certain vehicles and I don't know. I'm sure it's it was still a pain in the ass to do that, and I'm not sure why. Because shooting in sequence is less important for action movies. Yeah. Shooting in sequence is really cool when there's like uh, a lot of character arcs and it helps the actor know where they are in the story and track their performance better. Yeah. But for an action movie, it doesn't seem like it's even important. To... Especially not for a Mad Max Fury Road, yeah. dude. N- the lowest amount of story a movie's ever had. <laughs> <laughs> and they shot that one in sequence. Yeah. Makes no sense, but that's just crazy to me. Yeah, that's nuts. And I told you off air like uh, last year or something, but... The editor for Mad Max Fury Road uh, was handed 470 hours of footage to go yep. through to edit that movie. Yeah. four hundred. It took her three months just to watch all of it. I would have said... Just to go through the footage. Yeah, I would have gotten the footage and said, all right, thanks. Here's my rec- resignation. Here's my two weeks notice. <laughs> but it's I'm not wor- I'm not doing this for two weeks either, so it's just my notice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, just the notice. Just the notice. This is no two I'm, weeks. I'm quitting. <laughs> it's my 15 minute notice. Yeah. Um. So that's just that's crazy. Yeah. But what a fucking and, nightmare. Yeah. Go ahead and do your. Uh... Oh, also, um, I found out that Matt that Tom Hardy signed on to do three more Mad Max movies after Fury Road. Like he's under contract to do three Mad Max movies, and they're oh, just shit. just not using them. They're just not doing those. I mean. He George Miller said he has another Mad Max movie planned after Furiosa. Mm-hmm. And I'm praying that it's a t- it's a Tom Hardy Mad Max movie. I hope to God, dude. Like if we don't get a movie with him as the lead with like an actual arc and you know lines. He has 52 lines in Fury Road. Yeah. He starts he starts Fury Road with problems, ends Fury Road with the same problems but a stab wound. <laughs> yeah. That's it. <laughs> yeah. But 12 grunts yeah. accomplished. Um, I need a I need a Tom Hardy Mad Max. Yeah. Like, I need that bad. I wouldn't so mind if they still, like, even in the new movie, he still doesn't, like, talk at all, but just, like, well, experiences yeah. stuff. That's his character. But yeah. I, I want him to be the focus. Yeah, the for movie. sure. For sure. I mean, you get all these flashbacks in Fury Road of, like, shit that's happened to him. Like, you see the flashbacks of that girl assuming to be, like, his daughter or something. You mm-hmm. don't know anything else aside yeah. from he's got some fucked up shit yeah give me more yeah i want more of that so one word mr miller hopefully his Gimme. next uh, his next mad max movie is the wastelands movie that was supposed to be made instead of furiosa yeah and that's just a fucking baller ass name wastelands. mad max wastelands God, oh are you kidding me i'm fully told. give me the chrome paint i'll spray it right into my mouth yeah. right now yeah <laughs> Witness. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my trivia. I feel like mine's pretty easy too. Okay. Um, I went through a, I went did a different uh, thing going through my trivia, but. All right. This one should be it. A softball. What nickname do the kids give Mister Hunnam and the holdovers? Walleye. Walleye is correct. Yep. All right. <clears throat> The next two could be kind of difficult, but okay. I think you should get them. In the menu, the dessert is a variation on what food? I'm just going to throw out a guess. I have no idea. It's a, des- it's a dessert. Very, very popular if you can envision the ending scene. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's the dessert? Yeah, that's the dessert. Oh, s'mores. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I thought it was like an actual, like... A plate in front of them. No, no. I was gonna say flan. <laughs> That's gonna be my go-to. <laughs> right. <laughs> that would have been Wet awesome. bread, just 
right off the bat. I'm gonna congeal all you fucks in jello. <laughs> <laughs> Flan. <laughs> all right. All right, the next one is very, very specific, but it's really funny. Okay. In Banshees, what does Barry's character find and show Colin's character at the, when he's first introduced, when you first see him? Oh, a stick. A st- got a long stick. What? A stick with what? Pointy stick? No. It's got something on it. A stick with a hook on it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a stick with a hook. <laughs> Stick with a hook. Do you remember what he asked him about it? What Barry asked? Yeah. You know what I could hook with this? I don't know. <laughs> he says, what do you suppose this is for? Hooking something from the length of a stick away? <laughs> Dude, I need. I want to rewatch Banshee so bad. Everything Barry says. Is so... <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, didn't think so. <laughs> there goes that dream. There goes that dream. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, dude. What do you suppose this is for? Hook at something from the length of a stick away. <laughs> <laughs> Why did he fucking have that? <laughs> he just like shows up with it. Oh, oh, that was dude, awesome. That, I love that movie. I'm I'm really proud that you got that one, because I was like, I'm going to do this question. It's going to be hilarious. Yeah, I went three for three. Yeah, dude, you're popping out the bag. Oh, yeah. Um, Watch list time. Watch list. I'll go first. We both watched Princess Mononoke. We did. We did, we did check that out. That was uh, a recommendation <coughs> to me by Biberoni. Biberoni? I don't know. Shout out. He knows who he is. Beeb or Beb, whichever you, you are. Um, we don't discriminate. Sick movie. Yeah, I gave it a four. Yeah. I thought it was just too long. But great animation, great score, interesting story. I think it's probably my favorite Ghibli as of now. Mm-hmm. But that's just not like a super high bar to pass. <laughs> It's, I gave it a four, and it's my favorite Ghibli. So. What do you have Spirited Away at? A four. Four, yeah. yeah. I want to, because I ended Mononoke thinking, like, I like this more than Spirited Away, but it's been so long since I've seen Spirited Away that I want to rewatch it again. But yeah, I mean, those two, are I have them both at fours as well, and they're my highest Ghibli movies. I think Spirited Away <clears throat> gets a little too weird for me. I don't know, dude. I... So, so, I like the wacky sometimes. I like the wacky. I like wacky movies, but for some reason, Ghibli wacky just doesn't really do much for me. And I think Mononoke, it has its weird elements, but it's mainly like a human story. Yeah, it's like still, a, it's, a conflict between humans. Yeah, it's still very, human-ish. it's like spiritual. It's kind of just fantasy, yeah. it feels like. Yeah, but there's less like big, <coughs> big fat witches floating around and like turning into beads and. <laughs> Yeah. Just odd shit. The happening. three heads, the big baby. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's just less of that. So <laughs> I'm, I'm a little higher on it. And then Totoro is, is like a cute little film, but it doesn't really do much for me either. Yeah. So, and I just didn't like Boy with the Heron. Yeah, Boy with the... Uh, boy in the Heron, sorry. <laughs> boy in the fucking... Melatonin. Hoo-ha, dude. Get out of here. <laughs> Boy in the hooey. <laughs> That's what I call it. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm still waiting for a Ghibli to really blow my socks off. I think it'll probably be Grave of the Fireflies that does it. Dude, that's... That's gonna fucking kill me, dude. I want to watch that and... Um, How's Moving Castle. Yep. Kiki's Delivery Service. I want to watch all those. I can tell you my instincts, my... My fucking sixth sense, if you will, tells me that Kiki isn't going to be the one that blows your socks off. Why is that? Because it's a woman? Are you sexist? Do you I just... Women? Are I, you divorcing your wife? I like men. Is I like men, so, too. What does that, that have so, to do with this? I'm just saying. I prefer, I prefer a nice man in front of me. I like men, unless we're talking about Alex Garland. Yeah. Then I don't like men. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> very much I'm don't like less it. of a fan of the old men <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no um, i i remember kiki and it kind of i vaguely remember it leaning more towards the neighbor tutoro kind of mm. feel yeah, but it's probably going to need to be Grave of the Fireflies because that can really... It appears that it really uh, hits you hard. What about the uh, Poppy Hill one after that little tidbit we found out? That could be the one. Is that... Yeah. That's the incest one? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that'll be my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Mona Noke was good. Four star. I enjoyed it. I just thought it was too long. But... You know, all these Ghibli movies kind of all feel the same to me. Yeah, Mononoke uh, had some violence in it though. That yeah. was a very that was very refreshing. Dude, yeah, that that's I, probably why it's my favorite. Yeah, I saw I, the very first thing happens, and I'm like, "What the fuck?" Dude, we <laughs> looked over at each other. Sport, minor, very minor spoilers, I guess. Not even really spoilers, but probably something that is in the trailer. But the main kid shoots a bow. He shoots an arrow, and a guy's head falls off. Yeah, he, it's like he the, cuts a guy's head clean off <laughs> by shooting an arrow at it. It's like the very first conflict he has with humans, and he shoots an arrow and decapitates a guy. Yeah, <laughs> his head falls off of his body. Yeah. It, it's fucking nuts. And then he shoots another one and, and blows a guy's arm off. I was like, "What the fuck is going yeah. on, dude?" Yeah. When I saw that, I was like, <laughs> "Okay, so this is gonna be my favorite Ghibli movie." Yeah. Like no matter what happens. Um. Yeah. If it was just. If if the pacing was just a little tighter, I think it, I think it would have been like a four and a half for me because I enjoyed yeah. it. But next day we watched uh, Civil War, which is, which is the main topic. So I guess we might as well just go ahead and discuss it. Mm-hmm. Very divisive film. This uh, Civil War. It's strange that it's that way. Like you, think, you think it's weird? I think so. Just just because, like, I don't think Civil War... Like, I don't watch Civil War and go, that was trash. But I also don't watch it and go, that was a masterpiece. Well, it seems like most people... Most people are putting it right in the middle at a two and a half or a three. Yeah. Or two. And then there's, like, some people who are drastic on the other end and they'll give it a four and a half... And some people are giving it, like, a one or a half star. And it seems like the people who give it a half star are really upset about it being apolitical and not having a stance on anything. And the people who gave it a four and a half or a five, which I have seen fives, they love it because it's apolitical and because it doesn't have a stance on anything. So everyone saw the same movie. But it's just, how do you feel about it? How yeah. do you like that? Do you like that choice that he made? And it was a very intentional choice for him to stay very apolitical and not really get into anything. Yeah. And <clears throat> so for me, I fall in the middle. I gave it a three. And I don't like the apolitical nature of the movie i don't like how it doesn't have anything really to say except war is bad it doesn't take two hours to tell me war is bad i can i already know that yeah i don't need to watch a movie I knew that when i that. was like six dude so <coughs> the whole concept behind a civil war movie about what what would happen if a civil war happened today in america that concept is interesting seeing you know what all would happen what are the reasons you know, uh, what what does this side want? What does this side want? Uh, who's going to align? And all that stuff's, like, really fascinating to think about. And he doesn't get into any of it. Yeah. All he says is the Western, the Western forces are California and Texas, which makes no sense. <laughs> Those two states couldn't disagree more on anything. Yeah. Um, he just took, like, the two biggest states and was like, yep. Yeah. They'll work together. And I together. mean, I don't care if I don't care that much that he didn't like pick a side or put in like politics he could have just made shit up like just made up events that happened and, yeah like, but if he did then story. people would have drawn their own like oh well that's something that the right would do and oh that's something that the left would do and 
I mean, at least their own... at least there'd be something to talk about aside from I... Texas and California team up and fight. I agree. I mean, I feel like even though people would, you know, bring their own <clears throat> politics into it and assign like, oh, well, this he this is representative of this and blah blah blah. At least it would be like explaining what's happening what's going on yeah and, and people give put, you something to talk about like you said yeah people put their politics on. literally i guarantee there's probably someone that saw uh kirsten as the lead actress in the movie and was like oh this is leftist because they have a woman fucking as the main probably. actress so like, it doesn't like people people like that are gonna force whatever narrative they want onto something but i mean at least people would be talking like i watched that entire movie Watch the war happen. I have no idea why they were fighting each other. Yeah. And I was listening <coughs> to a uh, Alex Garland interview, and I'm not a huge Alex Garland guy. I like Ex Machina, and I like Annihilation, and I don't like men at all. Yeah. And I think Civil War is okay. So, like, in general, I'm not huge on him. Um, but he's a... Uh, he's a nice guy and he's a good interview too. Like he's, he seems like someone who would be very closed off and like kind of pretentious and not really want to talk much about what his movies mean and blah, blah, blah. But he's like really open about everything. And uh, so he seems like a cool guy. So shout out to him. But he was talking about all that stuff and about how he made a deliberate choice to, uh, to stay out of it, not take a side, stay political. And he thinks that, uh, he was like, I hate when movies preach to me and like, tell me what I should think. And I wanted to make a movie that's kind of a blank canvas and people can hypothesize what they think is going on and what they think each side wants. And he's like, that's much more, uh, interesting to me than just getting yelled at and saying this is right and this is wrong and blah, blah, blah. Which I think is, like, a respectable thing to do, in theory. Like, I see what he's saying, and I see how that could work. But in, you know, when it's put into practice and you have to go watch the movie for two hours, it ends up feeling to me very hollow and very, like, uh unimpactful yeah I, when when you don't know <clears throat> I, and i don't care how much it connects to our society today like that has nothing yeah. you know i love science fiction which has you know some of the best science fiction does parallel to society but anyways like i'm, I'm not saying i want it to be political and have a stance on the left and right and donald trump and all that shit i'm just saying like i would like to know why these people are at odds yeah. I would like to know the backstory of what the president did, why people think he's a fascist, why the Western forces are trying to fucking kill him. Yeah. And all this shit I, I think could have really benefited from some backstory. And I was telling Carl on the way home, I think instead of just a bunch of exposition to explain everything, what could have worked, maybe some people would see it as lazy, but I'd see it as just like necessary things to give the audience a backbone of what's happening you he could have basically done what rise of the planet of the apes did with their intro which is basically um while the opening credits are going and you're you know listing off the actors and producers and everything you're getting like a montage of news footage and uh you know this the in rise of the planet of the apes it's talking about like the outbreak and yeah the simian flu yeah the simian like flu blah 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 so you're learning a lot of backstory <laughs> about the world and what's going on just from the opening credits yeah like background stuff you'll probably miss a couple things but like it's giving you setup yeah. on the world you're entering it plants like just enough of the seed for you to be like obviously there's some shit going on yeah you know how easy it would have been for him to do that with like just some some quick clip of something the president did that set everyone off and made him think he's a fascist. Yeah. Like, you don't even need to, like, put in, like, the lead up to that point, but maybe just, like, a one pivotal point in the division in the U.S., you know what yeah. I mean? You don't have to go into every single detail, but, like, give us something. Yeah. Give us something to understand 
Because what's I get, going on? Yeah, I get what he wants for people to like draw their own conclusions, but you have to have something to at least grab onto. Yeah. So it it ends up feeling very hollow to me. You don't know what's going on, so you don't really care. Yeah. And a lot of people don't like the characters in the movie. I I liked the characters and I liked the performances, and that was kind of one of the saving graces. Was that even though I. Th- didn't love what was going on with the story and how little was being explained. I did enjoy the characters and the performances. So that kind of helped my viewing experience. But a lot of people didn't like the characters and the performance. Well, everyone liked the performances. They were all good. Yeah. But a lot of people didn't like the characters. So if you didn't like the story or the characters, like you probably had a pretty miserable time. Um but I, I did like Kaylee Spaney's character. A lot of people said she was annoyingly naive and blah, blah, blah. And uh, Kirsten Dunst was too cold and closed off. And it's like, yeah, they, those were the characters that they were playing. Kirsten Dunst was playing a, a very hardened war photographer that had seen a lot of shit and had started to become sort of cold and desensitized to all of it. And Kaylee Spaney was playing a young character that idolized Kirsten Dunst and wanted to do what she does and didn't like fully it it took her some time to like get adjusted to what she was seeing and what she was taking pictures of and so she has like an arc where she starts out really scared and by the end of the movie she's like jumping into fucking war to get pictures yeah I think the problem is like how much it depicts her kind of like having fun like there's several times where the characters appear to be having fun while people are dying and that's kind of like I don't remember that really happening yeah it happened with the guy during the um when she gets her first like big picture um the dead guy like the shootout at those buildings. Yeah. Where they went up the stairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the guy the guy I was talking about like how much fun it was and how he was like pumped even the night before talking about how excited he was to go towards the gunshots and and see what was going on. And then the the finale, the end conflict, um the the young girl was like smiling at him and like you know, just being kind of nuts. Yeah. If people are shooting at us and I look over at you and you smile at me and like, 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 what's up, man? I would say you're fucking crazy. Yeah. I. <clears throat> when it comes to the characters, yeah. I mean, I liked Kaylee Spaney's character. I thought she felt very natural and how a, a real person would probably experience that situation. I just didn't like what they did with Kirsten Dunst's character, which I won't spoil. But it felt very out of character to me. I feel yeah. like they set up her character and who she is and what she's what she does, and then at the end they kind of threw it all away. Yeah, I, I know what you're. T- I know what you're hitting at. I think it would have been. I think it should have been reversed. Yeah, I was gonna say. I well, I think it would have been more impactful for like nothing to have happened. If you catch my drift. Yeah, I mean that. Yeah, you if she that if she was like. Hey, shit happens. Yeah. I would have been like, whoa. Yeah, I just thought that that was like a really weird <clears throat> move to make. Yeah. Um, <coughs> so I wasn't a fan of that, but I gave it a three because I did enjoy watching it. I like, I had a good time watching it. Um, the scenes that were intense, the best scene in the movie is the scene with Jesse Plemons in it. Dude. He is easily the best scene. I, and that's not just me meat writing Jesse Plemons. It's legit the best scene yeah. in the movie. Dude, no, Jesse can take command of a screen. Yeah. He can he can he he is like so intense with and he's not even like doing anything crazy. He's like being nonchalant. He's being chill. Yeah. But it is it's like the only time that I'm like on the edge of my seat, like, oh fuck, dude. There were other times I was on the edge of my seat, but that's that the was, big one. That was easily the best scene in the movie. Yeah. And Jesse Plemons wasn't supposed to play that character. They had another actor who was supposed to play him, 
but days before the first day shooting, the guy dropped out due to like scheduling conflicts or whatever. I don't know how you, you don't know their scheduling conflicts until three days before you're shooting. But anyways, the guy dropped out and then Alex Garland started like freaking out. Cause he was like, this is a really pivotal scene. We lost our, our lead actor in yeah. that scene. And Kirsten was just like, she was like, I, I know a guy. Jesse. Yeah. Like I got, I got someone in the old pocket. Yeah. And she was like, I'll ask him. I mean, I can see if he'll do it. And so they just lucked out that, that Kirsten, she's married to that, Jesse Plemons. Yeah, that she's married to Jesse Plemons. One That's of the crazy. Most dude. talented, like cameo actors in the game. Yeah. That sounds kind of disrespectful to call him a cameo actor, but he does it a lot. Yeah. Like in movie killers of the flower moon, like anytime he shows up, he steals the scene. And that scene was ridiculously intense. Yeah. And I wonder if people who didn't like the characters felt it was intense because I cared about them. So like I, I was on the edge of my seat and it's fucking terrifying. Yeah, dude. I would, I would, especially considering that's the type of stuff that could happen if, if this happened in real life, dude, we got home. If you've seen the trailer, you've seen uh, Jesse Plemons in the movie. Um, I went home after we watched it, hopped on Amazon, started looking at all red sunglasses. I was like, I need a pair of those. Got I mean, I'm not it. sure if that's the character you should be modeling yourself after. Not the character. I'm modeling myself after Jesse Plemons, dude. Jesse wore red sunglasses and he looked fucking handsome. Yeah, he did. But you're so, not Jesse Plemons. Yeah, but you can pretend, can't you? <laughs> You can at least hope that <laughs> if you see a handsome guy doing something, you can try and replicate it. <laughs> um, I know I would look like an idiot if I wore a scorpion jacket. I wouldn't look like Ryan Gosling. I would look like I yeah. was a fan of the old scorpions. Yeah, you're right. But in my head, if I put one on, I'd be really cool looking. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's crazy that he wasn't supposed to play that character initially because... I'm sure he did better than whoever they had. Yeah, I was going to say. I don't know who they had unless they had fucking Ryan Gosling to play him. Like, I I don't see how anyone could have done it better. Um, Especially with him not having, like, any crazy, like, accent or tics or anything to make him weird. Like, he was playing a fairly normal guy. Yeah. He was crazy. But, like, in terms of how he was delivering lines and everything, he sounded like a normal guy. Yeah. But he was absolutely terrifying. Yeah, and I can't really say more than that without getting into spoilers. But easily the best scene in the movie. Um, I don't know why the one guy couldn't just make some shit up. I don't know why he said what (laughs) he said. That was crazy, dude. Like, just think of something else. Yeah. Like, are you are you an idiot? (laughs) Are you what I'm thinking? Moron. Kind of thinking you're stupid. It Um, would be a tough. (laughs) It would be a tough lie to sell, though. (laughs) Yeah. I'm from Philadelphia. <laughs> Might be a little racist. Yeah, you're saying Rob should have done that, dude. <laughs> but I, uh, yeah, you're you're right. It it would be kind of a hard sell, but <laughs> try. I yeah. mean, it's better than the the uh, just telling the truth. Yeah, like at least there's hope. Um, but yeah, that scene was awesome. The at third act, hope. The third act was like really intense really well shot action the action also in the movie um there's like your the typical gunshot sounds in movies that all sound the same they all sound like movie gunshots but in civil war they sound like actual gunshots yeah and it feels very real and i think what alex garland was going for was trying to make everything feel as real as possible that's why there's very minimal like color grading. There's very minimal style. He's not trying to make it look like as cool as possible, like most movies do. Yeah, like, you want movies to look cool. He went with a very like just natural color grading, natural framing of shots. Uh, not a lot of score. There's some like needle drops. Breakers roar. Breakers roar, dude. Carl got pretty ha- excited about that. That was. <sighs> Awesome. But other than the needle drops, there was pretty much no score, so it seemed like his intention was just to make it feel documentary esque. Yeah. And the sound effects that he chose, like, really enhanced that. Yeah. It does feel a lot more real than 
how just an act how a John Wick feels when there's gunshots. Yeah. You know? So I don't know. It's it's a weird film. I definitely don't hate it or love it. I'm right in the middle. I enjoyed watching it. I I still really don't I don't really understand the choice of telling the story through uh, war photographers. I don't really understand what he's trying to say about them other than about the desensitization that they go through. Yeah. I feel like I don't know. It just seems weird that you would, uh, like, if that's what you're trying to say, is that war photographers get desensitized, then just, like, do any war. Any war. Yeah. And you can kind of tell that story. Yeah. I don't know. It was kind of an odd choice. But I think this, I never thought I'd say this, but I think this movie really could have gone for some political commentary. Like it, I think it really could have been enhanced by some actual meat, like yeah. to discuss. And I, I'm not political. I'm not one way or the other. I don't care when a movie has, um, like, political themes in it. Uh, I don't like being preached at. Yeah. But if you're presenting ideas and letting me like think what I want to think about them. I'm never going to have a problem yeah. with that. And I feel like this movie really could have benefited by having some actual ideas to, like, think about. Yeah. Because there's nothing... What is there left to think about when you leave Civil War? Like... Nothing. What kind of discussion are you going to have? There was nothing, <clears throat> like... You're not leaving with your friends and saying, like, oh, like, I think I think the right side was, you know, in the right yeah. because yada, yada, yada. And, like, oh, but the left side, like, they had this. And there's nothing... You you leave the movie and it's like yeah war bad yeah and war photographers and go through ship yeah that speaks volumes to like how little there is in the movie because if let me let me tell you all something if cash is ever bothering you bring up politics he'll be gone <laughs> he'll leave <laughs> he'll leave at a moment's notice if politics <laughs> gets brought up dude he does not care he wants to do anything but that and this the same man we're talking about here said they should probably have gotten a little more political, yeah. <laughs> which is nuts. Yeah. But yeah, like, with, without anything to grab onto, I, I just, like, the movie was all right. I think that's how, that's, someone asked me, like, what I thought about Civil War. I was like, it was all right. Yeah. You know, kind of, it's, just it's kind of middle of the road. to make a movie called Civil War and include no yeah. real politics or... <sighs> yeah, it's called Civil War happened. surrounding a conflict that you know nothing about. Yeah. Also, I heard someone else say, I think it was George Carmi, he said, like, also, why is it so important that these two people get a picture and an interview with the president before he dies? No, they, like, they kept saying, like... What are the stakes of this happening? Like, why is why should we care that they do this? And yeah. why do they care so much? Why are they going to risk their life to do this? Yeah. What's, what's the, the, the prize of this? So... That too, like their motivation, just kind of being like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, when they when he she said that, like the first time, I was like, "All right, sure, I guess." <laughs> All right, I, I I mean, I guess I don't know. I guess sure, that's a good buddy. Idea. <laughs> um, and the the scene in uh, the Winter Wonderland kind of summed up the whole movie because they showed up and there's this guy in the house sniping these two guys like in the grass. And they pull up and they're like, what are you two fighting about? And he was like, I don't know. And she was like, so why are you shooting at him? And he was like, because he's shooting at me. Yeah. So that's that's the audience. Like, yeah. we walk into this movie and we're like, what's going on? Yeah. Why are y'all fighting? I, I did know. I did like that scene, though. That scene was funny. It was Yeah, it was a funny scene. Yeah. He was like, oh, I get it. You're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I think that's... All I really have to say about Civil War, um, I gave it a three. I mean, I, I enjoyed it enough yeah. while I was watching, but probably not something I'd rewatch. Not something I'd really recommend to other people. I'll probably forget like everything about it in the next like month. Yeah, to be honest, except for Jesse Plemons' sequ- like that whole yeah. sequence. If I ever rewatch Civil War, it's for that. Yeah, it's for that scene. 
But yeah, I, I don't. If you're giving it a five star, I don't know, man. Knock it off. I, I, I'm happy that you like something, but I don't know. No, man. I mean, yeah, of course. Like, if, if someone <clears throat> likes it, I'm I'm glad that they like it, yeah. and I don't want I don't want to change their mind. But I'm just I'm curious what people are like latching on to that's really making them like love the movie. I, I don't know. Jesse Plemons is probably what they're latching on to. I mean that's that's valid. If yeah. you're giving it a four and a half because of Jesse Plemons, I can't fault you there. Yeah, you're doing the right thing. I'm a coward. <laughs> you're you're doing. Yeah. You're the big man. Jesse Plemons and Breakers Roar. That's all you need. Yeah, it's like Monkey Man when I heard JID. Oh, my instant God, four star. Dude. Yeah, everything else is just a bonus. After <clears throat> everything that. just falls by the wayside, yeah. dude. <laughs> yeah, but that's all for Civil War. Um, it was all right. Yep. Next day, I watched another recommendation. Kind of went crazy with the recommendations. I've been wanting to wheedle down my list. You're I getting think last it. week. There was a point last week I had seven on there. I'm down to two. Oh my god, you're an animal. Hey, I you're mean, a fucking I'm animal, saying, dude. I'm just saying. I'm I'm weeding it down. The the next day, I watched Blue Jay. You know what Blue Jay is? No. Blue Jay is an independent film starring Mark Duplass. Ooh, my boy. Love, love me some Mark, um, and Sarah Paulson. Heck yeah! And it's uh, a American really horror story. It's a really low budget movie about these two people that uh, were in a relationship when they were younger, and then they split apart, and then they both come back into their hometown for like whatever reason. She's the girls. Sarah Paulson's there because her sister's pregnant, so she's visiting, and uh, fucking. Mark Duplass's character is there for a reason I won't get into, but they see each other at the grocery store and they just like, it's just like a day of them hanging out and oh. talking and catching up and going over their memories and like talking about where they thought they would be, where they are and that's sweet. Like that why sounds things, like a... why things didn't work out. And it's, it's pretty fucking good. It, it sounds like a sweet, sweet movie. I, yeah. I like that. I like, I like what you told me just now. Yeah, and it's, it's like got a great <clears throat> setting. It takes place like up in the mountains. Oh somewhere. God, yeah, that's awesome. And it's in black and white. You don't like that? No, I was. I, I thought you oh. were still talking. Yeah, no, that's oh. cool. Yeah. Uh, so super. I don't know what the budget was, but you can just tell. Unless they paid Mark Duplass and Sarah Paulson a bunch. Um, there's only a couple locations and it's just really sweet. Like it was funny. Um, really sweet, uh, smart dialogue, sh- incredibly short, like an hour and 20 minutes. Heck yeah. As short as 80 minutes. I mean, that's the perfect movie. Yeah. It's 80 minutes, but yeah, I, uh, don't remember who recommended that, but, yeah, I really liked that. I'm a I'm a Duplass. That was my uh, my letterbox review was I'm a Duplass whore. <laughs> I just ever since I watched the league, that was the first thing I saw him in, and I'm just a big fan of Duplass, and I love him in Creep. Yeah, he's so it's hard to not see Joseph from Creep whenever I see Mark Duplass now. <laughs> he's so ingrained. Yeah. Um, next day I watched another wreck. Watched Train Spotting. How was that? I gave it a two and a half. People really like that movie. It's another... What I've... not this. I didn't discover this just now. I've always known this. But I don't like movies about drugs. <laughs> I just don't like them. I just find them incredibly boring. I don't do drugs. I've never done drugs. I'm never going to do drugs. So preaching about don't do drugs does nothing for me. You're preaching to the choir, pal. I, mean, I, I don't need you to tell me that. <laughs> You're not going to so, do drugs until Ryan Gosling hands you a J. I'd make an exception for, <laughs> for, for that man. But <clears throat> I had the same experience I had with Requiem for a Dream. Like, well-made movie. It's doing its job well, but I don't care. You're, I'm not the target audience for this. Yeah. And typically... That's what I was worried about. Like whenever you said you watched Train Spotting, I was like, if I'm not mistaken, I, again I haven't seen Train Spotting, but I was like, I'm pretty sure it's basically the same thing as like Requiem for a Dream. 
not Honestly, like don't not story story wise not like beat for beat but like they're both don't do drugs movies they are both don't do drugs movies um this more train spotting more so is more hopeful and like okay. optimistic and it's it's funnier it has more like energy and life and the characters are better and i do like train spotting more but i just don't really connect with movies about people that do drugs even when it's not the point of the movie, even when it's not a drugs bad movie, even if it's just characters, like a, it's a comedy and a lot of the jokes are about how they do drugs and, you know, stoner comedies. I don't even like those. Well, it depends. You like, uh, you like Beautiful Boy. That's a don't do drugs movie. Yeah. But it it's, is. The- but it's also kind of a family movie too it's a good family drama yeah i don't know i don't know what the difference is why i like beautiful boy a lot and not train spotting and i don't know if train spotting has that kind of like aspect to it at all but um i think off the top of my head that's the first thing i thought of i think off the top of my head beautiful boy just has more likable characters i got you i sympathize with nick and beautiful boy and uh I, a lot less so in train spotting and uh requiem gotcha so i can't i don't know what else it, it is why i like that one and not the other two but anyways I, I just don't really like movies about people that do drugs it's not for me i could see someone who has had drug problems watching train spotting and thinking it's the best movie ever made mm-hmm. and really like hit home with them but it's just not, you know, not something that I'm interested in. So yeah. I didn't love it. But it was cool seeing a young Ewan. Yeah. And there were parts that were funny. But, you know, a couple yucks in a hour and a half movie. Not really <laughs> worth it. Not really based in the old turkey. Yeah, so I wasn't a huge fan, but it was all right. <clears throat> and then yesterday... I had tickets to see Shrek 2 with my pals. That's what happened. I had tickets. Uh, For context, Shrek 2 is my sister's favorite movie. Always has been, always will be Shrek 2. She's seen it a hundred times. So when it was announced that it was coming to theaters, I was like, okay, Logan, we're seeing this, right? She was like, yeah. I was like, okay, pick a time. I can do any time. They're doing it for like a four day stretch, like Monday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Uh, so just pick any time, I'll go. And she picked Sunday at five. I said, all right. So Sunday at 4.30, I show up in the living room. I'm ready to leave, go see Shrek 2. And they said, they're not going. <laughs> <laughs> that, that definitely happened. We had tickets. I mean, we yeah. this wasn't a up in the air thing. This was just we're going, and all of a sudden we're not. So I went by myself. Well, here's the deal. Here's the context for the old scoopers here. I didn't want to go watch Shrek Two, but uh, Logan said, "Oh, we're watching Shrek Two," and I was like, "Oh, Cash is going," and she was like, "Yeah," and I was like, "Well, if both of y'all are going, I guess I'll go." She not really sick, but wasn't feeling herself decided she didn't want to go. And I was like, Oh sweet. I don't really want to go either. So I just won't go. This doesn't make you look any better. You're openly admitting you didn't want to see Shrek two in theaters. That makes you look bad. That's because I'm, you look like an idiot. I'm married to the person whose favorite movie is Shrek two. You know how many times I've seen that fucking movie. You know how many times you've seen it in theaters? I don't ever. I, (laughs) Not once. I haven't seen a single Shrek movie in theaters, except for Last Wish, which isn't a Shrek movie, but it's in the universe. But uh, I just... We're not I, talking about other Shrek movies. We're talking about Shrek 2. I I didn't care for to watch it. Yeah, I've I know. It. That's my it. point. My point is that you're an idiot. My, my point is that, that you're an idiot. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you're telling the guy that saw Shrek 2 in theaters... To shut up. Yeah. I'm glad that your audience was kind of shitty, too. <laughs> Think about what you're saying right now, man. 
Uh, yeah, you're you're just. I mean, you, you either know ball or you don't. <laughs> and I know ball, and I know that Shrek Two is a fucking masterpiece. And I wanted to see it in theaters. Hell yeah! What'd you give it? I gave it a five. Oh my god, that's what I'm talking about. It's. I haven't looked at all the animated movies, so I could be forgetting, forgetting some. But for me, I think in animation, I think the holy trinity of animated movies is Toy Story, Into the Spider Verse, and Shrek Two. Oh my God! Over Incredibles. Yeah, man. And honestly, the Odd Man Out. If I had to pick two, the Odd Man Out's Into the Spider Verse. Really? Yeah. So I think, I think Shrek Two is approaching my favorite animated movie ever. Oh my gosh! It's hard to beat Toy Story, but I thought you had Iron Giant pretty high. I, I mean, it was something I watched as a kid, and I like it, but it's not anywhere up there. I got gotcha. you. Um, I do love Toy Story, but I think watching Shrek Two as an adult and actually realizing how much of a great movie it is and it's not just like a a joke how some people there's like joke movies like spy kids and people act like it's good because they watched it as a kid i'm gonna get hate comments for saying spy kids isn't actually good (laughs) you know what i mean shrek 2 like actually now that i'm an adult and i watch movies all the time and i notice like uh filmmaking tactics like it's incredible how good Shrek 2 is. <laughs> like, it is absolutely ridiculous. First of all, the comedy is way ahead of its time. Yeah. It lands with kids and it lands with adults. And no matter how many times I've seen it, the comedy is amazing. What's your uh, what's one of your favorite moments? One of your, your favorite funny moments from the movie? Oh, funny moments. Um, I like at the end, spoiler alert for Shrek 2, but I like at the end when Fiona's dad turns back into a frog and uh, Donkey goes, and he gave you a hard time. <laughs> <Dude. laughs> that shit is so funny. A lot of the stuff Donkey was saying. Uh, yeah. I really like uh, Enough Reggie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That yeah. dude busted That's out good. a solo in the middle of their fucking entrance. Yeah. Um. Oh, funny moments. Dude, you got uh, Shrek on knights instead of cops, and he's running, fleeing from the police knights, on a white... Knights, I thought was really funny. Yeah, on a white Bronco. Yeah. A little OJ yeah. reference. Yeah, the OJ reference, the alien reference. Yeah. I don't think I ever noticed that until now. <laughs> but there's so many, so many movie references yeah. and, like, pop culture references in Shrek. Because, I mean, Shrek was designed as a parody. Yeah, of like the of the princess stories and Cinderella fairy and tales, all that stuff. Yeah. Fairy tales, yeah. Um, so there's so many things. The Mission Impossible music yeah. when Pinocchio is like um, I'm, hoisting down. I'm wearing women's underwear. Yeah, <laughs> is that, I most certainly am not. Uh, are you? <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> but yeah, like when I was a kid, I didn't know that that was a Mission Impossible reference. I thought that was just the song you play when you do some heist shit. Oh. <laughs> and then I watched Mission Impossible and I was like, that's the song from Shrek 2. <laughs> Dude, they stole that from Shrek 2. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> that's what happened. You watch watched... Alien and you're like, Dude, this is like Shrek 2. <laughs> Dude, they stole that scene from Shrek 2. <laughs> Everything I see is <laughs> Shrek 2. <laughs> yeah, it, it made so many references that I didn't even like recognize. But oh, funny moments. Yeah. I like when when he goes into the potions factory and he's wearing the mask with the with the gloves on the ears yeah. and everything and he goes uh he goes working hard or hardly working am I right Mac? Yeah. <laughs> and they just see him and he's they're like yeah sure. Yeah. <laughs> he's definitely one of us. Dude, that shit's so funny. Um the potion escape scene Gave me chills. Dude, the the soundtrack to Shrek and Shrek 2. Mwah, fucking Shrek 2 has one of the best soundtracks. Yeah, it's so good, dude. I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. Um, insane juice in the potion scene. Yeah. I mean, when 
when the guys first see them like in the potion room and then the song kicks in yeah ever fallen in love is the name of the song yeah my dick gets hard i mean it's it's insane like how good that scene is and uh, also the scene everyone knows we've talked about it on the scoop before we made a tiktok about it i need a hero the oh. final scene i know i'm jumping ahead but like that first of all gave me chills yep made me cry <laughs> made me do both <laughs> Had you blown out of both ends? That's dude. why I wanted. That's watching movies in theaters is like watching it for the first time again. Yeah, and it doesn't seem like it would make a big difference, but it's what happened last year when I watched the Dark Knight trilogy in theaters. Like watching Batman Begins in theaters felt like watching it for the first time, and I really wanted to see Shrek two in theaters, and it didn't disappoint. I like it. I already loved Shrek 2. I already thought it was like an incredible sequel and better than one and all that. I had it at a four and a half. And this in theater experience like cemented it as a five, as a masterpiece. Um, But uh, yeah, the I Need a Hero scene, like I was just thinking about like the importance of it and like what it meant and like Shrek changing himself for Fiona because he thought that's what she wanted. And then, uh, like, him, he's he's starting to realize that, like, you know, fuck all the physical shit. Like, I, I, we love each other. Yeah. And that's all that matters. <clears throat> and he's charging in to a castle to, to get Fiona while diegetic music of I Need a Hero is playing because the fair, fairy godmother is singing it at the dance and it's cutting back and forth between her singing it and him charging the castle and like puss in boots like fighting fighting the guards and yeah him riding donkey who is a steed yeah at the time Stallion. like dude them going and getting mongo and God. Dude, Mongo's the homie, Be dude. Good. Hell yeah, dude. Dude, come on. Let me tell you. Not the gumdrop box. <laughs> the, uh, in the potions room, when they sneak into the actual potions, and uh, Puss is going to get a potion, and Shrek goes, uh, try looking for handsome. I've never related more to a scene in my <laughs> life. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> I'm looking too, pal. Yep, and I'm apparently, keeping my eyes peeled. And you've you've been told that you look like handsome Shrek before, so I have been told. I, I dude, I've been told I look like the most shitty people. <laughs> I want you to think of every handsome guy you know. Not one of those guys. Yep, it's not one of them. It's not Ed Sheeran. I don't know if I ever you did. I bring that up on the scoop about the most recent one, where this lady who oh, has already. She's already called me a cheering before. I, it's this lady I run into at work, and she told me the last time I saw her <laughs> that I looked like Ed Sheeran. <clears throat> and then she, I saw her last week, and she said, "Has anyone ever told you you look like Ed Sheeran?" And I was like, "Yes, believe it or not, I have heard that." <laughs> and From someone that looks quite like you. <laughs> yeah, and I said, "I don't really see it, but everyone else does, so I guess that's all that matters." And she was like, oh, yeah, you you just look like him, but you're a little thinner. I think she had good intentions when she said that. Yeah. Because typically saying someone's thin is like a good thing. Yeah. Like, that you're like, oh, you're complimenting you. them that they're not tubby. But uh, how do I put this nicely? Ed Sheeran's a scrawny little bitch. So <laughs> the only thing like that you can say to make it slightly better is like, oh, you're Ed Sheeran if he was a little, like, thicker. And yeah, a little, if you're you a little know, muscular. A little, little more built. Yeah, a little more built. Yeah. Like, there was this one guy I worked with who I only worked with for, like, a week, and then he quit. But he told me I looked like a buff Ed Sheeran. Yeah. So I was like, we're getting somewhere. You I mean, like, I still don't like that. Yeah, Ed but Sheeran if he at least was you added something. Ford. At least you added something nice to it. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't just a slap in the face. Yeah. So... She thought she was, like, being nice by saying Ed Sheeran but thinner. But that's actually worse. Like, that's... 
I'd rather just you tell me I look like Ed Sheeran than I look thinner than him. Yeah. Than a five seven little Irish boy. <laughs> I'd I'd much prefer just yeah. say nothing than tell me I'm thinner. I don't know, dude. I feel like the Ed Sheeran thing. Ed Sheeran's a pretty popular guy. People like him. I I mean, my wife tells me that it's any fat guy with a beard. She'll be like, you kind of look like that guy. Yeah, she said you look like Papa Meat. Yeah, it's any any fat guy with a beard. She'll be like, dude, Carl? <laughs> she'll, she'll, she'll start walking towards him like, yeah. like it's me. I'm like, no. I think what it is that guy. is my beard's red and people just don't know any gingers. So they just, that's the only one. Like that's the only person they can think of. They could go with Seamus. I'd take that. I'd much rather say someone tell me I look like Seamus. But that's the thing. There's so few gingers and people just don't know who to say I look like. So they yeah. just say him. But you're not really a ginger. You just, they can't see your real hair because yeah. you hide it. Yeah. You hide your beautiful locks. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think I've seen how the top of your head looks in like never will like, like two months, dude. Yeah. <laughs> You've got the toboggan on or your guy. baseball cap. Permanent hat guy. Um. So yeah, I mean, I don't think I'm a ginger, but I'm also super pale and have a red beard, so it's getting hard to beat the allegations oh. at this point. I didn't think I was super out of shape, but <laughs> <laughs> some somebody's lying, dude. Yeah, <laughs> and I don't think it's everybody. I think it's probably me. <laughs> um, so yeah, that fucking sucked. Uh, saying that I was not only do I look like Ed Sheeran, but I'm thinner than him. Yeah, you're also a fucking cancer patient too. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't even remember. Oh, we're talking about handsome Shrek. What the fuck were we talking about? Oh, I was talking about the potion scene where Shrek was looking for a potion called Handsome. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Yeah, no, dude, the potion scene, it's so good. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's so the, good. The potion pa- scene, the I need a hero, and I really like the family dinner scene. Yeah. Oh, that's another thing. Like, uh, when they first get there, when, they, when Shrek and Fiona first arrive in the little onion carriage. Yeah. <laughs> it starts intercutting between Shrek and Fiona's conversation and the king and queen's conversation. And the way it's done is, like, masterful. Yeah. They'll, like... I'll try to explain it, but, like, um, Shrek and Fiona will be having a conversation, and he'll be like, yeah, I'm sure this isn't going to be a... And then it it'll cut the to queen. the king and queen, and he'll be like, disaster! <laughs> yeah. and, and, he'll, and then he'll say, like, a line or two, and then it'll, and then it'll cut, and Shrek will finish the line, and it... Like, it's genuinely great. Like, it's genuinely perfectly planned out dialogue and filmmaking. And stuff you do not see in animated movies. Like, that stuff you'd see in a De Palma film or, like, Tarantino. Like, someone super good at filmmaking, super good at what they do. And stuff like that is littered throughout Shrek 2 that I like there was so much that I couldn't even unless I took out my phone and started putting them in my notes I can't remember all of them yeah but genuinely amazing filmmaking yeah taking place at all times the dinner scene is another one that like yeah uh the dialogue in that scene is so good yeah dude they're really they're really like really clever dialogue yeah I also really like when they arrive and Fiona introduces Shrek, the little pose that he does. <laughs> when he's, he's like, he oh, like puts yeah. his hand up. Yeah. And he's like, I see where Fiona gets her good looks from. Yeah. She's a fucking ogre. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <coughs> and then, uh, great soup, Mrs. Q. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. And then, uh, I didn't realize until our cruise, but. It's fucking escargot that he's eaten in that one where like the plate with like a Isn't bunch of circles eyeballs? on it. It's snails. Mm. But like I, I had escargot on the ship and I they brought it out and I was like, This looks just like the ship from Shrek Two. <laughs> and I realized That was they, your alien moment. Yeah, they were like, like Oh, like, this is Dude, I this asked This is for, a reference to Shrek Two. Yeah, I asked for Escargot, you brought me the ship from Shrek Two. <laughs> 
<laughs> in case you were wondering, you fucked up my I order. I think you fucked up my order. <laughs> <laughs> You're just going to fuck up my title like that and keep going? I'm here with this doctor. <laughs> Oh, God. oh, dude, I wish I could just, I could talk about Shrek 2 for, uh, for ages. Yeah, it's but, really good. Yeah, the comedy's great. The needle drops are all perfect. Some of the best needle drops. I, I think I Need a Hero's top five needle drops in movie history. Fuck, dude, that's what I'm I think it's about. really up there. <coughs> um, the character arcs are so smart and impactful and clever and the pacing is ridiculous. It's only an hour and a half, and it flies by. And it's there's fun like action sequences. There's like the potion escape scene. There's just so much always happening, and it's um, so entertaining. It's flawless. Like it. It sounds stupid saying that about Shrek too, but it really is. If you're yeah. paying attention. Especially to like the small details, and I don't know. I, I liked how um, I finally noticed how the king was very judgmental of Shrek because he was insecure about how he used to be a frog. Yeah, and that never I never really noticed that until now. Thought he was such. A, I thought it was just like you know, I like as a real jerk. He was <laughs> like, a real piece of work. Yeah, but he was insecure about how he was a frog, so he was overcompensating and. You know, all that stuff. And I didn't really notice that as a kid. But. Oh, and, and then when he when he dies at the end, uh, and then he ribbits, like he, he you know, makes the yeah. frog noise. And uh, one of the characters, I think it's the pig. No, it's Pinocchio's. He croaked. Yeah. Yeah. He croaked. Which, like, isn't like a laugh out loud moment, but that's just, like, clever. Yeah. Like, just a clever line. To write. Dude, have you seen all the Shreks? Yeah, we watched all of them last year. Oh, okay. Dude, I... In Shrek 3, this is kind of off I haven't topic. seen Puss in Boots, but... In Shrek 3, when they finally, like, rest after running the kingdom, and someone barges into his room and he goes, Well, somebody better be dying! And then it cuts to the king, the toad king, yeah. and he goes, I'm dying! Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Fuck, dude. I remember that. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. I don't really like the Shrek sequels that much, but... One and they two. Have their moments. One and two are fucking sick, dude. Yeah. Specifically two. Two. I, I think two is like a lot better. Oh, by by like how much? I'd give Shrek like a one. Uh, I was about to say a one. I didn't mean that. Uh, a full story. Probably like a four. Maybe a four and a half. But like Shrek two is an easy five. Like masterpiece. Masterpiece Heck, yeah. territory. Dude. Speaking of needle drops, the fucking bad reputation on Shrek 1. Dude. During the WWE sequence. Yeah. I mean. Dude, come on. I was talking to Oscar today, and he said bad reputation is a better needle drop than I need a hero. I don't think I think he's better. just out of his mind. I mean, it's. I think that's just a lunatic take. It's sick, and it is a WWE sequence, which is like, what else? How much cooler yeah. can you get? But yeah. I need a hero just fits so well. Yeah. Perfect. I guess so does bad reputation because Shrek doesn't give a fuck. I dude. just love when needle drops like feel right. They feel like what should be playing. Yeah. Some needle drops you'll hear and you're like, I mean, this is a cool song. Out of <clears throat> outside of the context of the movie, I like this song, but it doesn't feel right. It feels out of place. It could be. It could be because it's being sung by the fairy godmother. Like that, bad reputation drops, and it's just like we need to play something cool while. People well, are ask well no, because the the potion scene is isn't diegetic and it's still awesome, and that's I still true. think that's a great needle drop. I'm just talking about like other movies. They'll uh, there's a real art form to doing needle drops that feel correct. James Gunn's great at it. Oh, dude! Um, needle drops that don't feel like the director just like adding songs from his playlist that he likes. Yeah, I think Civil War kind of suffered from that. Like yeah. having out of place songs that are good but don't really make sense for the movie. Yeah, I think Gareth Edwards did it with the creator. As much as I like everything in its right place, doesn't really make sense yeah. in the creator. But Guardians um, Three, in the meantime, oh dude, dude, that talk about just perfect. Like that's exactly how that what would play. 
Like, yeah. you're doing that. There's nothing else. Yeah. Floating down to a spaceship like you're playing yeah. in the meantime. Yeah. Um, dog days are over. Like, God. he he gets it. Oh, that, The Chain get... in Volume 2. Oh, my God. Fucking Come and Get Your Love in Volume 1. Fucking, uh... Ain't No Mountain High Enough in, in Volume 1 at the end. Jesus. Brandy? The sailor said Brandy. Hell yeah. You're a fine And then girl. it plays into the reveal that Kurt Russell... Like, come on, dude. Yeah. Come on. What else do you fucking want from yeah. the man? Should I do my Tom Petty impression? Yeah. Don't don't even ask. Just bring it. <laughs> don't don't ever ask me. I need to me try to, to make up. Don't for ever my, ask uh, me that again. My Bob Dylan. Yeah. My Bob Dylan was quite shit. All right, let me sit up for this. Let me see if I can do it right. Yeah. Because I did it good that one day. You let me see if I can do it again. It better be as good, dude, because you fucking nailed. It. <sighs> I get so nervous. Come on, I'm dude. gonna I'm gonna get stage fright. <laughs> She grew up in an Indiana town with a good-looking mama that never was around. And she grew up tall and she grew up right with them Indiana boys on the Indiana night. Doesn't, you guys heard it here. It doesn't sound right. Like, I, I'm telling you, I get nervous and I forget how to do it. <laughs> but if I listen to the song, I it doesn't, can, like, mimic it properly. It doesn't sound like it to you because you, you're hearing your voice no. differently. When I'm not on the mic, when I'm in my car, it does sound right to me. That's because you're hearing his actual voice. No, I'll, I'll turn the music down and I'll do it on my own, and it sounds right. I just get nervous whenever <laughs> I have to do an impression. I just my mind goes blank, and I'm like, these all sound the same now. <laughs> like my, I feel like my Bob Dylan isn't bad, but when I did it on the podcast, it was bad. Was it your Bob Dylan that was bad? No. Well, well my Beetlejuice was worse. Oh, yeah. Your Beetlejuice was... God, well, my... <laughs> the worst. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> Hang up the Beetlejuice, dude. Don't pull that out again. You think uh, <laughs> you think you can try Beetlejuice? I mean, I... Your only goal... I could tell be you right now. I could just say the juice is loose and that exact tone is better than what you did. I want you to, I want you to do a Beetlejuice. <laughs> okay, hang on. If you're gonna if you're gonna make fun of me, you gotta you gotta whip one out. All right, you gotta think about the trailer here. How yep. it actually sounds. My eyes are closed. I'm listening to Michael <laughs> Keaton right now. <laughs> All right, the juice is loose. It just kind of sounds like Jack Nicholson. Better than I did. Yeah, I it's mean, better than the juice is loose. <laughs> <laughs> right. Don't know why you did that, dude. That was crazy. I don't know. <laughs> that was nuts. I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> I was just, You're just goofing around that day. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to talk about it. It was. It wasn't my my brightest moment. Well, anyway, but, uh, Shrek Two is fucking goaded, dude. Yeah, like I could watch it again right now. Hell yeah. Um. Yeah. Was that it for your watch I, list? Yeah. Well. Uh, that's all for my movie watch list. I know you've been you've been pounding the old gun, but I watched a movie. I watched Ricky Stanicky. Ooh. Yep. So now we we've, we've both seen it. That was really funny, dude. Dude, it is really funny. <laughs> all the stuff that John Cena did, the shirts he wore. Yeah. <laughs> he just randomly joins him at the bar, and he has a shirt on that says "Goat," and it's a picture of Alf yeah. <laughs> underneath it. I was like, what the fuck? Dude? Um, I'll see more of a ham color. Yeah. This is getting closer to spam. Yeah. And then he starts, like, going on that, like, he was like, you guys like impressions? <laughs> <laughs> he starts going on this rant about <laughs> his mom calling him a butt baby, and they're like, is that from Downton Abbey? And he goes, that's just a skit from my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, holy fuck, dude. Did you like when it, uh, when it cut to him, like, doing the sex parodies of the songs? Yes, dude. <laughs> yeah. Slob on my penis. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was spooge out my penis. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> it's a nice day to uh fuck, what does he say? Oh he says jerk again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh I'll just go to the bank then. <laughs> yeah. Dude, all of all of Santina's little quips when she's like, why does he have his shirt off? And he's like, I'm sharing a moment with my son. <laughs> <laughs> it's important to have skin-to-skin -skin contact with yeah. a newborn. All right. <coughs> yeah. 
yeah, I thought Ricky Stenicki was better than Civil War. Yep. I, I had agree a better time. with that one. I don't I have to have a good time. Sue me. Lock me up. Already Throw me in the penitentiary. <laughs> Throw me in the having a good time penitentiary. Yeah. Sorry, I'm, sorry that I'm I like the fucking warden. That's sorry, <laughs> I like fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking Andy Dufresne of the yeah, damn dude. having a good time prison. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Call me fucking El Chapo yeah. <laughs> in, in the good time. I don't even need a rock hammer. I'll just camp out there. Yeah, dude. I don't need to escape. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm there. For, I'm, I'm a home. lifer, dude. <laughs> I'm home. I'm fucking Brooks trying to stay back in. I'm, I'm, I'm scared institutionalized. To leave. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. So yeah, Ricky Stucky, fun time, good shit. Yeah, classic. So we talked about it already. Yeah, I I dabbled in some uh, shows as Television. well. Television. Yeah, I binged the old Shogun. Yeah. Which was recommended to me by Remy and Max. Max is a uh, loyal scooper. We've discussed him before. Very nice guy. Um, but he recommended that we watch Shogun. And then Carl disobeyed his recommendation and watched Fallout. It didn't just happen like that. It did. I didn't just... <laughs> That's exactly I, what happened. No, I didn't... Here's the deal. We sat down to watch the first episode of Shogun. Had a tough day at work. I started dozing. I was like, listen, I'll finish this episode later. I go out the next day to teach class. A buddy of mine tells me Fallout's really good. I was like, I'll check it out. And then, like, while I was doing something, I was like, I'll just put on an episode of Fallout. And the opening to Fallout is fucking awesome. So it kind of, uh, kind of hooked me in. So I was like, well... I'm just going to try and binge this first, and then I'm going to binge Shogun. Because I think that Shogun still has another episode, right, that they have to release. Well, that's that's like the argument for needing to watch Shogun first is that, not watching Shogun second. Because you should want to catch up on Shogun. Fallout's out. Fallout, they dropped the whole season at once. That's sitting there ready to watch whenever you want. Shogun is actively dropping episodes weekly, so... You need to catch up quick so you can watch them weekly. You need to catch up quick to kiss my ass. How about that? Are you telling Max to kiss your ass? I would never say something like that to Max. I'm telling you that. Mm. Max is a sweetie pie. I know I gave him a hard time about the monkey man business. (laughs) (laughs) But Max is... One of the three people that listen to this podcast, <laughs> and I would never besmirch his good name. <laughs> but you, I have no problem telling him to kiss my ass, dude. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I just, I thought, you know, thought we'd watch, thought you, you were going to watch Shogun, but, you know, apparently I was going to, I was going to watch that episode and get caught up that first episode, but you fucking went four episodes deep that one night. Yeah, what does that have to do with you? Because then I got to get caught up for us to watch it together. Yeah. Yes, I said so we were going to watch it separate. Oh, I didn't know we agreed on that. Yeah. Well, we're watching it separate. I Yeah, that's quite obvious. Yeah. I'm done. I'm caught up and you <laughs> haven't started, so. I'll get there. That's qu- <laughs> quite enough. <so. laughs> yeah, I'll get there. Anyways, I watched Shogun. I caught up. I binged it. I'm the man. No <laughs> other way around it. I mean, I'm just the man. <laughs> I'm the man for the job. Um... <laughs> Shogun is gnarly. Hell yeah. Absolutely gnarly. It's like... I remember seeing the trailer during the Super Bowl, and you just never know with shows whether it's going to be quality or whether it's going to... Shows... I don't know what it is with shows, but they always look stupid. Like when you first see them announced and you see the the trailer for season one, it just always looks dumb. Yeah. I can't explain it. Um, But I just figured Shogun would be like a uh, try hard like trying to be you know a cool samurai show but it was kind of dull and bad yeah like a samurai game of thrones almost yeah that's what I figured and uh, so I wasn't I mean it kind of piqued my interest because I like Hiroyuki Sonata and I love samurai shit but I wasn't really planning on watching it but then it came out and then everyone started raving about it so I you know put my ear to the grindstone, I got to work, <laughs> yeah. and I caught up, so there's 
10 episodes in season one and they've released eight so far. So, uh, two more to come out. Episode two or episode nine comes out tomorrow. That's pretty fucking awesome. Yeah. Now Um, are they, this, it's a, a mini series, right? Like they're not doing another season, are they? No, they're doing another season. They are. Yeah. Oh, okay. For some reason I thought it was a mini series. Like they were doing this one thing and then that was it. mm -mm. I don't know. I mean, they may have marketed it as that in case it was bad and they didn't make a season two, but they're made. They announced like the numbers are so good that they announced they're doing a season two and it's based on a book. And I think there's multiple books. So, because when you look up the book, it says Shogun book one. So I I guess there's a book two or else. Why would it say that? Yeah. So, um, but yeah, supposedly there's a season two, but it really is like, it feels like a throwback to the early 2000s HBO when shows got like a good budget and you could film on location, no green screens. You could have like actual, you know, good choreography, good action sequences, good storytelling. And I mean, not a lot of filler episodes just to hit a fucking number. Yeah, not a lot of filler. Like, every episode's pretty equal in quality. It's not like, oh, this one was one of the best and this one's filler and dog shit. It's like all a steady, a steady ride. Um, so I don't really have like a favorite episode, but um, it's starting to get pretty crazy now. And uh, I don't really want to can't really talk about it because I don't want to spoil anything or tell people too much, but I definitely recommend it to everybody. And yeah, I don't know what else to say. And the season's not done, so I can't give like my full thoughts on the season either. Yeah. I'm just caught up to episode eight, but no, that's fine. So I've got to, I'm trying to decide on what I want to do next. I've, I'm thinking about either starting another show, like a short, something short like Beef, Uh or instead of starting a new show, trying to grind out Red Dead 2, because I don't like, I don't like that being like not completed, like... (laughs) That bothers you? uh, Yeah, because like, if I want to start another game, I I feel weird like starting another game before finishing one, especially considering... If I didn't like it and I thought it was bad, that's different. Like, yeah, if if you get a game and you're not having a good time, sure, just quit. But when it's Red Dead 2 and it's notoriously one of the best games ever made, like, I feel an obligation to complete it and give it its fair shot. Mm -hmm. So I was talking about games today in the Discord and people were giving me recommendations and telling me to play God of War and God of War Ragnarok, which I played like an hour of God of War and it was fun. God of Wars, God of Wars, good. It's probably like the only Souls like game I've ever beat because I fucking suck at Souls games. Um, I heard mixed things about Ragnarok though. I I'm not maybe not as big in the gaming world as you are, but I did not hear mixed things about Ragnarok. I heard come in my ass things about Ragnarok from every. I didn't hear a single person say they didn't like it. Oh shit! I've heard. Every single person I've ever heard talk about it says it's, like, perfect. I think there's some elements, like, involving, like, some stuff with Kratos that happens that maybe people don't like. I don't know. I've I've, I've seen people talk about, like, how... I don't know. I don't want to say anything because I don't want to, like, spoil Ragnarok because mm. I kind of know what happened, what goes on in it. Mm. And they could be, like... It's probably bogus because it's it's got a war. Yeah. It's the coolest shit ever, so... yeah. People were uh, recommending the Resident Evil games. Resident Evil's really good. So, you know a lot about Resident Evil? A good amount, yeah. So, they told me to play 2 and 4, and then he said in parentheses the remakes. So, is 2 a remake of 1 and 4 a remake of 3? Or are all four of them different, different games? I haven't played the remakes, and as far as I know... The remakes are remakes of the original games. Like I, but I is would Resident Evil Two a remake, a remake of, of Resident one? Evil Two? Oh, so there's Resident Evil One, Resident Evil Two, Resident Evil Two, the remake, Resident Evil Three, 
Resident Evil 3, the remake, like... Like, there's the Resident Evil games that I played when I was younger, and they started just now doing remakes of the original games. Oh, so... Two isn't a remake of one. He's just... they were, Maybe they were just saying two and four are the good ones, so play two and four, and choose the remakes of them, because they're better? Yeah, I would think so. Oh, okay. Because that kind of confused me. Yeah. Because, like, if you did a remake of one, why would you call it two? Why wouldn't you just say one remastered? <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a remake of Resident Evil Two. So they're all different stories, like they don't. Connect. Yeah, yeah. It's, if if I remember correct, yes. Okay. Yeah, they told me play two and four of Resident Evil. They said there's three God of War games before God of War 2017, but you don't have to play them. Yeah. Kratos as a character is in such a different point in his life in the new God of Wars that. Like, they go over what brought him to the new God of Wars. It's all you really need to know. I They said they would recommend, like, maybe watching a recap on YouTube of, like, what happens in the original trilogy of games. Yeah. But, yeah. So I've been thinking about getting into more games because they do fascinate me. But God of War just... would be right up your alley, too, because it's not fully open world. It's very Last of Us-esque. Like nah, it's kind fuck of with that heavy. It's it's open but linear. Like you can go to a place, but you're not gonna do anything there. You're, yeah, you can. You got to go to the objective. I fuck with that. Yeah. A lot. Um, I I want to get more into games, but they're just so time consuming. And I like I already don't really love watching shows because they're so time consuming. I like movies because I can sit down and finish it in one sitting. Yeah. Beginning to end, done, one sitting. A show you're watching for like a week. You're spending a whole week on one thing. Yeah. Games, depending on how long the game is, you could spend a month on the same game. Yeah. So. Red Dead 2 is a fucking big undertaking. Dude. Yeah. It, I grinded the shit out of it so that I could return it to GameStop before mm -hmm. they, they didn't accept it. Yeah. I'm. I think I'm on like 23% on Red Dead 2. It's good. Like, I, I, there's just so many side side missions, and I don't know really what are side missions and what aren't. And do I have to do every mission that's like got a yellow dot? Anything involving Lenny, dude? Lenny. <laughs> I don't know why. I did Lenny. <laughs> Lenny. <laughs> Is that you, Lenny? No, I. I I don't remember how I was able to. <sighs> there's so much traversing. So much. Side missions. It's like, Dude, just give me the meat here. Fucking stagecoach, I'm telling you. Don't fucking go places on your horse. Fucking get yeah, a stage on the stagecoach. A bunch of fucking riding. No. Place dude. to place, check, like, mission to mission. Press the sleep button and you, you get there. What? When you in, enter stagecoach, you can... There's an option, I think, to sleep on the wagon. What if you're driving? No, dude, you pay a guy. It's like a taxi. Oh, no, I don't. Are do you that. stealing this? You're stealing no, the stagecoach. Like the mission, like the mission I just did last, we we drove a stagecoach. Oh, We're delivering moonshine. Oh, okay, yeah. No, I'm talking about like if you have to like get like across the map. Oh, just fucking. I could, I could, I guess I could try that. Pay a hundred bucks for the wagon. I don't know. It's good, but. I just westerns aren't really like my favorite setting so like a 30 40 50 hour game that's a western I mean I really like it I like the um the arc that the main character goes through is very uh heartfelt and it's see that's why I want to play it because everyone always says Arthur Morgan's one of the best characters ever created yeah and it's not like the the weird part is it's not like your typical arc where he's like drastically different. It's just kind of like it's all right. It's all, yeah, it's you almost like just it. it's it's kind of it's kind of similar to God of War a little bit. I haven't played that so. Oh, it doesn't. I thought you did play God of War That's for like an hour. Oh, but it's it's a it's a really good it's a really good game. Yeah, I wanna I wanna play it. I wanna finish it so I can start something else. 
GTA Five is really good too. I used to watch Outlast videos when I was young and when I was a youngster. Oh yeah, yeah. Fucking neat. <laughs> <laughs> I guess my point was like maybe I'll try some horror games. Oh yeah, there's a lot of horror games, dude. A lot of horror games. They did a. Uh, it was like a big deal, but it was a playable trailer to a Silent Hill game. That was mm. really, really cool. And then they teased like Norman Reedus as being the lead. Mm. And they didn't do the game. And instead, he was in... Uh, what's that fucking game? Dead Death Stranding? Yeah. That people don't like? Evan really likes it. Really? Yeah. He described it like it was a piece of shit. He said, basically, you like wander around a planet and like deliver stuff. Yeah. Like you're you're an Amazon. Worker. And you wear a suit. And he said he loves it for that reason, but people hate it. <laughs> yeah. And you wear a suit that turns your pee into monster energy drink, and then you drink monster energy drink. Hell yeah. Sounds awesome. And it, they call it monster energy drink because they're partnered. <laughs> 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 yeah. I'm pretty sure. Hell yeah. Man, but, shit. Yeah. I it's, need that. <laughs> a still suit, but instead yeah. of water, it's a monster. Yeah, it filters it into Dude, I'd fucking tear down energy. a building, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be the least on Al Qaeda. Yeah, make, dude. Turn my pee I'd be, into monster. I'd be pointing the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah. I haven't decided if I'm going to go hardcore into games or not. It's very time consuming. Mm. Mm. Do something light. You don't have to do anything crazy. It's the thing. I like short games, so yeah. I can. I I do think you would like GTA Five though because the story changes. Between three different characters, and they all have very different like personalities. So when the game starts kind of feeling like it's maybe getting stale, by that time you're in a di- you're playing as a different character. You know, you've recommended me the GTA Five story before, and I think for whatever reason, no matter how good you say it is, not playing it. <laughs> Why? I can't describe it. But that's like the last thing I want to do is play the story to GTA Five. Why? I I've played GTA so much in my life with my friends online. I just want nothing to do with that. Dude, one of the main characters just wants to stay at home and watch old movies. Why would I care? That's what I do. Why would I watch he's, someone do that? It's cool because he's like he's like you. I'm, but I'm like me. <laughs> Why do I need someone else to be like me? Well, he's like a cooler version of you. Oh. <laughs> so he didn't have a purse when he was 10. <laughs> probably. Oh, okay. Probably not. I don't think he did the old happy feet routine. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Let's oh, settle down. All right. I think that's uh, all we got, unless you had something else to discuss. No, I'm still pretty uh, early into Fallout, but I will say it's pretty fucking badass so far. Uh, That's it. The story hasn't really progressed um, to the point where I like could talk about it. Hell yeah. Um, I don't know what we're going to talk about next week. I don't think there's any big releases, but we're seeing the Interstellar on Wednesday in theaters. Let me tell you, I'm going to be erect. The whole time. Dude. I'm not going to let him leave. <laughs> I'm not going to let him leave, dude. <laughs> um, yeah, so... We'll, we'll, we'll figure out something. Yeah, you know? we'll put a little something together. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll figure out something. Interstellar is going to be pretty fucking gnarly. So, uh, they released uh, Spider-Man in theaters today. Like, the 2002 Spider-Man. But it's not showing near us, so fuck me. Awesome. Because I didn't want to see it in theaters anyway. Yeah, not really. Yeah. That'd, that'd be awful to see that. Yeah. So, fucking fuck them. Anyways, uh, thanks for listening to the Film Scoop. Film Scoop.